The CNN people. It's a good, good evening to Dave. So glad to be sitting here. <laughs> Two of the premier gentlemen from Washington, D.C. It's like, um, what did I say before about the fascist system? I'm from, from Germany. Germany. Yeah, I'd say like <laughs> but you gotta you gotta say like the DC you say Washington DC and then they be like they're from Maryland people are like yes Washington DC no what's up everybody we're back with another episode of the Fashion Citizen Live Lounge and I'm quite comfy today if you notice the Crocs and we're chilling out today with two gentlemen who represent one of the dopest brands that I've had the privilege to work with which is Shop By so Shop By is not your typical uh, photography, creative type of industry. It's kind of a all sorts of industry. They do creative direction, commercials, music videos, all type of creative things. So we're going to dig into the bag today um, and talk to these two gentlemen from Shop By and see what it takes to run a creative brand today. We're going to allow these gentlemen to introduce themselves and then we will get into the interview. <laughs> gentlemen. This is so Ooh. fun. I'm always a fool. So you already see the type of energy we on today. Uh, this gentleman is Nick. This is Maul. And uh, like I said, they are two of the people who run the Shop By brand. And um, if y'all could just tell us a little bit about uh, how Shop By started. Like when when was the day y'all said, all right, we're going to do this for real? Go ahead. Go ahead <laughs> shit. So look, all right. This is the CEO of Shop By, actually. Uh, what was it? The 24th of February, which is coming up actually. Uh, 26th. When was the 26th? 26th. He sent a DM out to a bunch of us. The main group, that was the day we started. We just started. Like, the basic, you do this, so I, like, I'm, I'm building a team with you. Mm -hmm. That's how we started for real. What was the day we actually linked up though? We gotta be ready in that interview. Yeah, the 26th. Okay. I sent the e I sent the DM to everybody in December. I don't know. In December. <laughs> they just conversed about it all January. Because me and Primary was working together. You know, right. we had to get right. like that day off type shit. And then niggas took that trip to Waldorf. Yeah. So that first interview was the 26th, and that's when we started. Right. right. So, so um how did it like what did it start as like was it just photography or what was the first thing that shot by was doing a multimedia collective okay like, we did everything like the goal was to to shoot everything we could that's why we don't have like one lane so i feel like over the time like you just like did that motherfucker. i can't mm. hold you like we definitely conquered every type of photography I guess there is. Right. So did you when you started this and we all first got together, did you see this day, that day? Like did you see yourselves right here when you first started? Yeah, in a sense, yeah. I thought I would be doing other shit though. Mm -hmm. But not necessarily like taking the the lane that we took like the other day when I tweeted, like glad we didn't do this concert photography because right. niggas wanted to be paparazzis. Like, oh yeah, we, we were like that locking in mm -hmm. as paparazzis. Whenever somebody come to the city, we there send them shits off to TMZ or somebody goofy like that. Cause that's when the editing was like yeah, that. we was real life editing the car right after right after the shoot. Like I'm driving, we got the hot spot and the jump mall in the passenger. Give me the files, give me the files, like yeah. that. Right. Editing. As soon as we, like, touch down, niggas got them shit. Right. And it's not like the the preview. Like, it's, you get the preview, the video, and the Get video. everything in one time. Yeah. So, like, I've worked with y'all a few times on different projects, and the turnaround is crazy. Because most times when you work with photographers or videographers, there's always the assumption that it's going to take couple of days to a couple of weeks to maybe a couple of months so what uh what drives your spirit of excellence if i could put it that way like what drives you to say okay we did we did the we got the work done now it's time to make these shot by quality and then get them to the client like what drives you behind that can you agree with that saying having the vision 
I want to say that in the experience. Because, like, just basking in the moment of doing whatever you're doing, mm-hmm. I know this is about to be fire because I just did it. Yeah. So all I got to do is take it back, edit it real quick, it's done. Dude, that's the vision. I know, but I'm saying, like, <laughs> just being in it, like, doing it. Yeah. Like, making yeah. sure this is strict. Like, I fuck with that. Like, yeah. Almost. And I think that's, that's cool because if you like the art, like, if you're shooting it, you're taking the video, you're putting the art together, that, I feel like, informs what you do. Because then you don't want to sit on it, hold on it, because it's like, I want this to get out. So if this is something you're going to put on your channel or post, like, I want that. We want this to get out. We didn't do this to, like, sit on it and be like, all right, we took some really dope photos, some great videography. Cool. Now we just want to put it on ice. I mean, I do that. You personally, I do that. <laughs> you have to, though. Okay. You don't want to oversaturate your brand yourself. And people get tired of seeing it. Like, people expect to see it, but mm-hmm. then, like, for instance, I follow a few people on Instagram where I used to, where it's like, they consistent as hell, mm-hmm. but it's literally the same exact shot with a different person. Right. And it's like, there's no creativity after a certain point. Mm-hmm. Like, you can only change the lights for so much. So how do you balance then? How do you balance between I want to get my art out there, I want to be consistent, I want to make a name for myself, but I don't want to be repetitive and lose like the color of my work. How do you balance? Uh, well, me personally, I just shoot a lot to the mm-hmm. point where I'm like I mess up on purpose, so I know not to do it. Again. But like this shoot as a whole. It doesn't have to be trash. It's just I was practicing. Okay. If good, I came out of it. I can post it. I don't have to. Mm. But I was practicing for the most part. So it's really just repetition. Except the failure. True. What was the question? So how do you, the balance, like how do you balance between posting my art, getting it out there, and then the repetition, like, you know, it's just, it's just, at this point, it's just material. So how do I balance between wanting my art to be out there consistently, make a name for myself, and avoiding it's just something people scroll by? Like, how do you balance between the two? Try hmm. like perfecting your craft, I want to say, because we've been shooting for a minute, mm-hmm. so it's it's literally come to a point where. We had to make something out of nothing every time. Mm-hmm. So it's like, how can we make this that? So, not only that being a factor, but me personally, I don't really care to post them. Right. So, we're like, yeah, post what you want. So it became <clears throat> a thing where it's like, oh, yeah, we know kid not about to post these, so we're going to post some jumps. Like, mm-hmm. We're going to post some jumps. Ty post them motherfuckers or re added them type shit. And it's like, that's just what it came to, but everybody know like I'm still at every shoot. Mm-hmm. Or well, try to be at least. And it seems like y'all are saying like to be inspired. Like if you want to post it or you feel you should do something, be inspired. Like whether you post or you don't post, be inspired by be inspired behind whatever you do. Yeah. Like do it because you want to do it. Because you know, like myself, I'm a content creator, but I do behind the scenes. I'll shoot. I'll do other all the other stuff. And sometimes you get exhausted. Because especially if you're shooting, you're, if you're shooting and you're editing and then you're posting, sometimes when you post and it's like if it doesn't get enough likes or if it doesn't really like hit the way you want it to, you feel some type of way because you're like, this took 16 hours to do. Like between editing, shooting, wardrobe, hair, makeup, whatever. It took all this time and you post it and it's like, all right, it's just falling flat. But what, what would y'all say to the people... That are like, oh, it's just, it don't take all that. Because, like, you know, people always see our art. They see the end picture. And they're like, oh, that's great. Yeah. And then if they saw the process behind so much the, the art, some people say, like, it's not that it's not that deep. I can do it on the iPhone. I took great shots on the iPhone now. Like, I can do it on the iPhone. I could just get whatever camera do it. What do you say to the people that say it don't take all the Adobe and the mm-hmm. learning and the experience? Like, what do you say to those people? Set design and fucking editing. 
But what do you say to the people who say it, it doesn't take all the research it? Fuck personally, I wouldn't say nothing to them because right. you don't appreciate the art. You think mm-hmm. it's like you gotta do your research like three steps and it's done. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Nice. Wait a minute. Cause it seems like like I told somebody, I think that we have created a culture now of consumption. We put art out. I mean, of course, you put art to be consumed. That's why we produce art because we want people to either take it in and feel something or inspire them to do something. But I feel like we've created this culture of consumption. So people only want the next shoot, the next outfit, the mm-hmm. next video, and no one is like taking time to see like, well, what's the content of that? Why did they use shadow as opposed to highlight? Why is this a blue lens as opposed to a white? Like you know what I'm saying? I feel like people just want to see the next dope thing and they double tap, Mm -hmm. leave three fire emojis Mm -hmm. and they scroll past. Mm -hmm. And then if I don't post an equally dope shot tomorrow, I fell off. So like, what do you say to that? What do you say to the culture that's just saying, we just need shot by to just hit it every day. We want to see something every day. What do you say to the people that are consumed that are just, they just want the art? We can do that. You spank them every day with a new post, but it's like that's messing up the storyline, in my opinion. Because it's just like with music, it's that was literally like yeah. right before we got here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just like there's no attention span. Yeah, yeah. So the shit don't. Even if it's great, it's not gonna hold nobody, hold nobody's eye. But I can say. That's give or take. That's opinionated because I want to say, wasn't you? You said the picture that he took a boogie was one of your favorite pictures you've seen. I'm going to give you that picture too. Is it the picture with the green? With the frame. Yeah. yeah. Yes, so, the girl. Exactly. All right, so boom. Yeah. You said that uh-huh. and that wasn't on his page. Right. I told him that and this nigga wanted to rebrand again based off of, damn, I just like do be deleting shit type shit. Yeah. So it's keeping yourself or knowing yourself, I would say, mm-hmm. to where you don't feel like you need to, oh, this picture ain't that, I'm gonna delete it. Cause you said that was your favorite jump. And I'm like, damn, that's an ass picture. And we right. do so much. But the crazy it's, part is a picture of an ass. The crazy part about it is, okay, like in and of itself, could that picture be like IG model content, OnlyFans content, certainly, but to me it was because we've seen that we've seen the oiled up girl we've seen the nude shot we've seen the milk bath shot we've seen all of that but to me like to take something like that and make it artistic is hard because it's so easy especially because you know we talk a lot about the sexualization of the black body black women black men if we take our shirt off or you got certain clothes on it's sexual Mm -hmm. that's why you don't see a lot of black people in underwear ads because People can't look at us in underwear without it being sexual. Same with black women. I mean, you see it a little different with like Fenty and stuff, but when you see black women in underwear, it's instantly sexy. It's always sexy. But I thought the dope thing about that shot was that it didn't come right off the bat and say, this is like sexy. It was a dope shot. And I mean, yeah, you can appreciate it because yeah, she has a great body, but it don't. it's not smacking you in the face with that off the bat. It's a great yeah. shot. And that's why I say, like, you know, the stuff that you guys do or the, you know, the content that you guys have produced always has that quality that you can take it for what it is or you can use it for more because of the effort that's put into it. It's like the way y'all edit shots, like the shot we did, the shoot we did with Nick and Sid, like people are still reposting it. Like I see it pop up every so often in my timeline or see one of y'all repost it. I'm like, we literally had like a piece of idea it was just like all right we're gonna go do it and people are like yo this is so crazy but the idea combined with how the idea was treated is what makes it so great so you know that's that's why i said that about you know that that particular shot all the shots y'all do whether it's boudoir or editorial it's a certain level of quality you get from shot by like it's not it's like magazine quality and then it could easily be like IG. You know what I'm saying? Like you can post it on IG. You can post it here and there. So when you're editing, like what are the things you look for when you edit? Like you, you've done the shoot. You've got raw images. What are you looking to do now? Or what informs your decisions to edit? Wow. That's a good question. 
Look for eyesores. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm kind of a, a perfectionist, so I might go over a picture a lot of times, but more, more than less, it's just if something stands out like a picture to me, mm -hmm. I'm a rock with it until I don't like it anymore. But now looking back, I'm like, I know why I like it so much. speaks to you then listen to it pay right. attention to it so you say just because we had a, a gentleman who had some really bad car trouble just now um so Maul saying like whatever stands out in the image is something that's that's what you highlight that's what you go with mm -hmm. and you go based off of that so it's a feeling it's not necessarily like a technical thing like the blues balance and the there's 25 red with 13 mm -hmm. green like does it ever get that technical no, because it's all right. So you can create a shot or you can capture a shot. That's how I look at it. Okay, creating is really putting things together the way you want it so it makes sense to you. But right. capturing is just more so. I'm looking at something I like how it looks. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm capturing. And that's really it. It's been right there too long. So on that same vein, creating a shot, capturing a shot. This is a controversial question that I'm sure both of you are going to be excited to answer. What do you see more prevalent in photography now? Creating shots or capturing shots? I think I know what you're going to say, but I'm going to ask anyway. What do you see more of? Capturing. I agree, but... <laughs> Lately, it's been more creating, but it's like the... People I pay attention to. Mm -hmm. So, creating in the sense of this hasn't been done before. Right. Or it hasn't been done. How we're about to do it. Or like, this camera angle is something no one would have thought of, but I'm going to try it. So, it's like right. stuff like that I pay attention to. And I think that's what gets me about photography. Like, coming from a styling, creative direction background, I would always see shots that the photographer didn't take. I'm like, oh, he should have did this. Or, oh, like if I was, I would have done it this way because then you see this, mm -hmm. and that's what made that's what pushed me to want to start capturing images because I was like I have an eye that I want to see develop. It's it wasn't just like a photographer takes a shot and it's like oh that's great, oh that's great. And being on enough sets, you see great photographers, but you know no great photographer to me captures every single image. There are images that don't make it that you mm -hmm. don't capture whatever, but. That's to me what should drive you to get behind the lens. Is you want to create something that you, even if you were inspired by someone else's work or another shop, you your creation says I'm gonna do it in black and white if it was color, or I'm gonna shoot underwater or whatever. I don't know, but I think I, to me, I the most like what I see a lot of is capturing shots because of that consuming culture. Like, everybody's an influencer. We all make money from the gram. So, if somebody took a dope picture with a lot of jewelry on and the latest shoe with the latest jeans, I want to do that because I want my picture up on the level of whoever just did it. Right. Or if a woman is taking pictures, like the Savage Fenty thing is a big deal now. We have this conversation at the door. Downstairs. So, so like, <laughs> now you have... <laughs> the Savage Fenty Ambassador thing is a big deal. And that's cool. You know, yeah. get your money. But everybody's doing mm -hmm. the same shot. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, how you going to shoot something at a Tory mm -hmm. when that shit should have been shot to have, like, just straight landscape? Okay. Mm -hmm. You yeah. see what I'm saying? So yeah. you made something really complex when it was so simple. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people do that because you want to be seen as a photographer. Or you think that that's art? You think that that's artistry? Like, I'm gonna shoot ball gowns in a bodega, but that's been done. Yeah. It's been in vogue. It's been uh, people have done it for street style. Mm -hmm. People have done it at Fashion Week. Influencers have done it. So you taking a ball gown to shoot it in a convenience store is not new. I don't know that there is a new concept because everything's been done at this point. But mm -hmm. you can shoot the ball gown in the convenience store. With the fisheye lens, or you can shoot it like in sepia tones, or shoot it in vivid, and 
pull out all the pink or something. But I think that's where the creation part comes in as opposed to the capturing. Yeah. Like you have the concept and then you say, okay, this is what I want to do. Like this is how I want to create. Because I feel like even magazines now, it's the same. Like Meg Thee Stallion, great artist, great body, great woman, great you know rapper, all that stuff is cool. But if every time she's in something is tight and it's stretchy, it's like, okay, she's in your magazine tight stretchy, your magazine tight stretchy. When do we get editorial? And then if you do editorial, it looks crazy because you didn't even bother to really style her. Mm -hmm. It's just like, oh, we're going to put her in some Chanel and some Fendi and some Valentino. And so it's like, yeah, but it looks like she just got on a bunch of designer clothes. Okay. So I think I feel like that you see so much of capturing the shop because we just I feel like I said I feel like we want to be the person to post I shop Meg and Valentino and here's the shop. Yeah. But it's like like this picture of Zendaya right there. I'm mm -hmm. sorry to like mention that. But that shoot was that motherfucking shoot. If, yeah. Like, yeah. That was the best shoot I saw last year from any artist. And that shit Caught me off guard. Oh, I don't her shit. Her shoes be like that. They be like that. But see, with that, they they used um, Danielle Luna, who was like one of the first black supermodels, yeah. and they based it on it. But they didn't make it exactly like that. okay. We see her do this. So some of the some of the posing or the thing like she does this one where like she got her finger over her eye, kind of like they did. I think they recreated that shot, mm -hmm. but it wasn't like exactly like if you if you're informed by art. It informs what you do, meaning that it provides this space. It mm -hmm. gives it some 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 heft mm -hmm. to your art. But you take it and you make the details yours. Right. So you can take like a shot by image and say, okay, that's dope. I really like that. But I'm going to take the concept of what they did and then I'm going to put my stamp on it. I'm going to make the details me. my own. And here's the thing, too. I don't think that that's a bad thing. Like I know, I I do know some artists who are like really, 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 really protective of their art. And my thing with that is, if you're going to be super protective of your art, to some degree, you have to kind of withhold your art, because once you let your art out, even like, like singers, if you make a song, like uh, people have covered Adele or covered Aretha Franklin or Luther Vandross, once you release that song, it's, it's, it's so anybody, any somebody can get on YouTube and sing it. It might be horrible, but they can do it. If somebody want to sing it at an award, like we've seen award shows, like there's a this running joke with like print. I think they honor Prince at the BT Awards one year, and literally every artist came out and he was just like, because he don't like. Apparently they said like he didn't like other people singing his music, mm -hmm. but once you let it out, you can't take it back. Yeah, you, can. you know, but you, I feel like it, it does a disservice to you as an artist recreating and to the original artist when you just take something shot for shot to recreate it. Like you want this time of day, you want the color, you want the the same model. I mean oh. I, you can't really help that. Man, niggas people right watch you this people watch you and they love what you do so you don't try to do the same thing. And I, and here's the thing, I'm not t I'm not mad at that. Like I'm not mad at you being inspired, but you can't do because however because some shots that people don't a lot of stuff people don't know is that for a lot of us this dope shot that you really like was an accident mm -hmm. we didn't even mean to take some of those shots it just came out really dope or the camera went off and it's like oh that's fire i'm gonna post it mm -hmm. or that's dope i'm gonna put it on the canvas and so people trying to recreate something that was literally a happy accident so it's like that's what i'm saying mm -hmm. be inspired and and try to let that inform what you do but to try to recreate work it's it's too hard because yeah. you want you got to know the time of day you got to know what camera like what's the aperture what's this what's that and even if you get all of that and that goes back to other people not thinking it's so easy mm -hmm. like just one two three is done all of that takes me to how it came up right because you see those memes all the time and say uh what they asked for what mm -hmm. they got mm -hmm. And that's super prevalent in photography. People see a birthday shoot or a maternity shoot or different shoots, and they say, okay, I want this. And so you go to ShopBuy. ShopBuy says, okay, we can do that. That shoot is going to be X amount of dollars. Wow. Don't want to pay that. Thanks so much, guys. I'm going to go over here. 
Okay, cool, because you're not hurting our feelings. But then you go here and they charge you, let's say, a third of our price, and you say, great, I can do that. But then when you get the images and when you get the <laughs> editing and you're like, oh, but I, I want it with, but they told you what was going to give you that. They told you if, if this, is the, this is the amount of money we charge to give you the product that you asked for. And again, it goes back to that this kind of recurring theme of that's what it costs. That's yeah. the effort that we got to put in to do what you want. Yeah. And you want that, but then you want us to do it for a fraction of the cost. And I always try to tell people, you let artists give tell you about a discount. If the artist don't say, you know what, I'll knock half off. I'll knock 30% off. You don't walk into an artist studio of any kind with a discount. That's not what you do. And especially to me, like photography, because photographs capture an image, capture a moment. And you can't oftentimes recreate it. Whatever it was on that day, however you felt that morning, whatever the music you listened to, all inform what you do. And so you want to recreate that, it's going to be a different day, different feeling, different emotions. So, um, yeah, pay the people. Pay the people what they ask for. It's funny watching a client say we're like charge too much and then whoever they go to and then shit is trash. It's just funny to look at to me. I, I feel like that's the, I hate to say it this way, but I always feel like that's the best payback as an artist. Is. Because you didn't want me you want it, You really wanted what I do. But when I tell you what it costs, you don't yeah. want to do it, which is fine because you have a right to not like my price. Yeah. Just like as an artist, even if you pay my price, if I don't want to shoot what you want me to shoot, I have the authority to say, no, I'm, I'm not shooting. Yeah. I don't want to do that. Even if you give me the money, I don't want to be identified with what you're doing. Mm -hmm. No, thank you. And I think that's something that people have to respect so, as artists. You so said that. You so said that. A few ways to to basically spin people and tell them no, you don't want to shoot that content. Mm -hmm. It was a really good one in there that I wanted to use. You know, like, um, I'm sorry that doesn't identify with my brand. Yep, yeah. that <laughs> shit. I was like, damn. <laughs> it's that corporate time. Yeah, for because me. you, at the end of the day, you have to protect what you've established. And if shot by is based in quality, like y'all, because y'all do so much. You may not be genre specific. Like Shot by may not only shoot boudoir, may not only shoot editorial, music videos, uh, black and white stills, motion, whatever. We do whatever we can. Whatever we are able and capable to do, we do. But your brand might not work with what we do because we don't want to be associated with the subject matter. We don't like the models that you picked. And we have a right to do that because my thing always is when we look at the people that we quote unquote look up to the magazine photographers, the great photographers of the day. You always hear stories about people saying they walked in the studio and was like, nope, I'm out. Or they did a shoot, it was like, this is horrible, the model's temperamental, cut her. Mm -hmm. And we look up to those people. We look up to be able to get to the point like, I can't wait till I get to the point where I can say that. You can say it right now. Yeah, you, do. you don't have to shoot with that person. Mm -hmm. But see, I think again it kind of spins back to that idea of I got to put it out. I got to be the next viral yeah. sensation. I got to be the next one who took. A, yeah, but because you, you want to be seven. next. You want to be next. So I don't want to. Next I mean, might not be your time. Yeah, next. Correct. I agree. I agree. Especially when you have a vision early. You mm -hmm. understand like being next is, it's cool. Because mm -hmm. you're up in the spotlight, but it's like, we got a vision that's we need more things. This is cool. It's, yeah, we need more. I can tell you right now that it's plenty of niggas that we see coming up as we're doing this shit mm -hmm. who McCarty, who we thought we were on the same level. Yeah. And we like, damn, them niggas, y'all, like, they out here. They mm -hmm. locked in with X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. And it's like, damn, that could have been us. Why, why wasn't it us type shit? And we'd be like, that's not, that's not what we was here for. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that's that's the thing that we in the modern generation we have to understand is that like your turn is yours. It's yours. Like when it's your turn, it's gonna be your turn. It's for you. But we so busy, like I even thought about that this week, like 
I got some content I want to put out. I'm like, do I really want to? Do I need to? Do I have to do it? Because I started thinking about, and I know we always talk about Beyonce when we talk about stuff, but Beyonce, a couple of other artists that put stuff out. Beyonce don't post every week. But whenever she posts, she gets a certain number of likes. Her engagement is, she don't reply back to nothing. But if she posts something, it goes crazy. Other people that may not be on her level post things and it goes nuts, it goes crazy, and they don't post frequently. They don't do all this. And so I'm like, on the one hand, y'all telling people that are influencers or that are artists, you got to post because you got to get your engagement. We're working hard to try to beat the algorithm and do all of this. But you got other people who literally just post their art when they feel inspired and people love it. So I'm looking at like, I don't care anymore. Like, I don't care about the numbers. I don't care about the likes. I'm going to post what I want, when I want. I'm going to take the pictures that I want, when I want, and I'm done. That's, that's really it. Like, it makes no sense that, like y'all said, you know, about you seeing people out there, you think, like, okay, I got to work like them. I got to be here. I got to do that. And then you exhaust yourself. Your art suffers. And yeah, you you the next one. Like, you up on the that tier with them. But you hate what you do. Yeah, that was that rap shit. Like, you hate it. Like, to take a good picture, I'll say to take a good picture is very difficult. I'm not even going to pretend like it's, it's not. To take a good picture is very difficult. Once you learn how, it becomes easier. But then your eye changes and to take a good picture becomes a host of issues like people could love it and you like oh my eye was closed and I could have brought this down so yeah, it that, gets, it gets like that but it's like it's people out here who, are, who I believe are making great money as artists photographers videographers all that and I believe that they hate what they do they just make good money I can agree to that and I feel like that is what drives the culture now it's not necessarily the art it's the money because if I can get a, if I'm Cardi's personal photographer it doesn't matter what you think about my pictures. It doesn't matter that I could have focused better. It doesn't matter that my edit was slightly off. Hey, it just me. matters that I took a picture of Cardi. That was me at lip I hate that. Because I had a guaranteed check. And I knew how many hours I was getting. Right. I didn't care at one point. And it was like, I'm taking some of your pictures. And yeah, I'm I'm doing that motherfucker. But I'm not, I'm not having fun no more. Yeah. Like, so... Yeah, I made your mother cry, but I know for a fact if I would have added this rose and I yeah. did it at this angle, she would have been balling there. She right would have passed out. Yeah, you hear me? Not made so her pass like, out, but then but nah, she could cry. Not, she could just cry. Paid for that. I'm not getting yeah. paid to add that. Yeah, that extra. Mm. The song you want, and that's the thing I really feel like people like with shot by. People want the shot by look, the whatever. But what they really want is the sauce. They don't want to look like one one picture. They want whatever it is that when y'all wake up in the morning and you have four shoots in a day, whatever you whatever you have that gives you the ability to make four different shoots all be good, that's what they want. They don't want to look like the picture. They want whatever it whatever you tap into to say, hey, this is a boudoir shop. We're gonna do this this way with this. This is an editorial, we're gonna do this this way. This is a music video, we're gonna do this this way. And this is like a black and white artistic thing. All right, so I got that video. I, want, I just wanna say that was uh, like the best way to, to describe the baby fives. They want the sauce, the way that we yeah. make them feel, and the way that the shit comes out. That's why everybody feel like they can pick up a camera after us. Because, the, but, and that's the thing. Yeah. Once you have the sauce, I can do anything. But if I'm just trying to mimic your photograph, I'm literally holding the camera up and I'm like, okay, this is blue. Okay, so let me try to figure it out. Okay, it's this. Let me figure the contrast in that. So I'm I'm analyzing the shot for technicalities instead of saying, Maul was just sad that day. So all his shots had heavy shadows because that's how we felt. And people don't get that about artistry. Like, I just was in a bad place that day. So all my, all my pictures had heavy shadows because I felt that way. And the art was fire, yeah. but you can't replicate that because you're not me. Yeah. But you have to, I feel like that's, and that's the best thing. Like when y'all talking about like your legacy of Shabbat, the next generation, teaching them to tap into that. Like don't just take pictures. 
Don't just do what people want you to do. What is driving you to do it? If it's just cash, if it's, oh, I'm trying to be the next. I know I'm, I'm, I'm like, we baby fives, but I'm trying to like, nah, be you. Because that's what y'all do. Yeah. Like, don't just try to be the next one and you want to be the next one, but you want to be here. And what drives you? It's, it's always the sauce to me. I'm going to say majority of the shoots lately, we really be fried. <laughs> so it's like you can't overthink mm -hmm. anything too much. And if we do, it's like I'll come to him and he's like, bro, you overthink. And I'm like, all right. Because it's art. Yeah, bro. It's art. Like, if you overthink art, it's not art anymore. It's technical. Yeah, yeah. It's work. And then it's, when it's technical, then it's like, when you tap into your technical, especially as a creative, when you tap into the technical side of creativity, it's a rabbit hole. Because you'll be like, it'll be one image and you'll be editing it for three hours. Because you be Cause you're moving this and then you now you now you into the Adobe part where you moving the dials and okay, this is 32. Wait, was that 31 or 32? Okay, now it's this. All right, let me bring the shadow down to six and then let me do this. Okay, well, you know what? Let me save that and try a preset. Oh, uh-huh. Well, can I, so now you gone down a rabbit hole and then you get eight hours in, it's three in the morning and you hate everything. Yo, that's the worst feeling because you feel like you make so much progress and then you see something else and it's like, damn, this is trash. So I'm going to do this. Facts. Like, I don't even know what I like anymore. Yeah. I've deleted, like I've you shot. the vision at that point. You feel yeah. Like you originally saw it. I've self shot and been like, this is dumb. And somebody else saw it was like, that's really cool. I'm like, no. This is garbage. How yeah. dare you? You don't have eyes. Shut up. <laughs> Get on my face. And that's the thing. Like we be creating for other creators instead of for ourselves. Yeah. Like how somebody else would interpret it. It's like, nah. How do you interpret? It? Cause that's what people want to see. And that's two things I said I was doing for myself this year. One thing is releasing art on my own terms. Like when I want to, how I want to. I don't care how you take it. And secondly, giving myself the respect that I deserve because people will do it but I don't yeah. like people will say you dope and like I see people all the time when y'all post stuff when y'all do stuff it's like oh my gosh it's crazy it's reposting all the yin yang everybody reposting it's dope but sometimes you gotta accept the praise for what you do because I feel like that helps us sometimes to get through certain things because we we know we're good yeah. I mean because you know we get paid or you get certain acclaim and you're like oh, okay I'm alright but most times we never think of ourselves like other people do. Like you walk in the room and the, the room changes because you're in the room now. Like we here to work and people like, oh, okay, they here like, oh, I know it's gonna be good. And you just like, we here to work. Like, yeah. why are you so happy? That's but a you don't, because all the time when you, yeah, because when you're trying to work, you just like, all right, let's set up, let's get going, and then people are like, yes, like, okay, we know Yo. this is gonna be good. Because like. Like, everything I've done with y'all is always, like, even if I'm not feeling it at the moment, I'm like, I'm going to just work. It's got to get it done. Mm -hmm. And then you see it at the end, you're like, wow, that was really good. But again, that's the sauce y'all have. Like, I would do literally any project with y'all with sight and scene because I know that at the end of the day, it's going to be dope. Okay. However y'all interpret it, it's going to be cool. But that's that sauce I'm talking about. I think that's what people... Especially seeing how much work y'all do. Like, if we're really talking about shot by now, the amount of work is like mountainous. It's like a lot of work comes from y'all. But if you look at it, it's all high quality and it's all different. I've never seen two boudoir shots that look the same. I've never seen like, oh, this is editorial, this is editorial. Hmm. Mom was kind of sleepy that day. And then you look at the whole other end, the wedding photography. You would never know that the same people shot this yeah. shot, this shot that. Because the wedding photography is like a Washington bride level. Like, it's insane. But then when you see it, it's funny because y'all post all the time. These are the people that are at your wedding. Us guys. We, we're at your wedding. And then, because you think that, because people look at artists and it's like, because if you look at the shot by, if you look at the logo and all that, you're like, oh, these guys are, these guys are great. Yeah. And then y'all show up. And they're like, wait a minute. 
It's bad enough you show up in ones. Like you got a you know, nah, niggas was in Crocs for a minute. <laughs> but you, you see know, yeah. Bro, you see everywhere. You see the uniform, you see the people, and you think like, wow, but then you see the portfolio. And you like, well, wait a minute. Well, if they do that, <laughs> right this <laughs> right this way. So have y'all ever been misjudged? Like people see you and be like, yeah, nah. Especially at weddings. People be Mind you, we be having shot by polos and shit too. Yeah. So it's like they look. Think we in the way? You can have people ask us to get out the way because right. they trying to take pictures and shit, mm-hmm. or we're in their video and it's like we yeah, everybody <laughs> in this. Mm-hmm. We're getting paid to be here. Y'all are guests. Yeah, yeah. So talk to me about that because I've been at a few weddings and uh, I saw a gentleman once. I, it was the funniest thing I've ever seen. He's taking pictures now. The bride is coming in, so this is literally. <laughs> This is, you can't redo this. Yeah. <laughs> Once she get in, wraps it in the basement. Right. She's coming down the aisle. And so the photographer is, of course, in the aisle as she's coming down to get the images. Right. And so, of course, you have phones up. Somebody had an iPad. Of course. It was ridiculous. And and this is before iPads got like, like y'all know. This was like the big cookie sheet iPad. Mm-hmm. So they was like... So the dude literally, like, stops. Like, he was like, like, hit the singer, hit the all that. He was like, listen, I really need everybody to please put your devices down on the aisle because it is ruining the shot. Mm. And literally, like, he stopped. Like, it was like, hey, cut it. I can't, because I'm not going to, because if I'm I can. respect it, I'm going to do that. Because the work I'm trying to give you. You, you're walking down the aisle with your dad. This is a moment, hopefully, you're only going to do once in a lifetime. I can't give you a shot because everything is going to be tight on your face because your whole wedding guest has phones in the aisle. Yeah. Flashes and, like that. Flashes. And he took, you know, so they all put it down. He was like, I promise you. He was like, you know, you all can get other images. I hope they make these available to you, whatever like that. And, you know, he got his good images. But talk to me about wedding photography. Like, if y'all could do a tutorial for wedding guests, mm-hmm. all right. What would you one. say? These are the don'ts. Like not the do's. Do not do this at a wedding. Number one, don't sit right there by the aisle. Don't do that at all. Do not do it. What you mean? Like the first row on the. This is the aisle where y'all are or where you are. Mm-hmm. Don't sit where he is. Sit right here. Leave this open. Yeah. Like, cause you want to be, you want to, I want to be the, like, as soon as you come in, I'm ready. Nah, not only that, but for us, so we are not kneeling in the middle of the aisle, we can have a seat right here to get the shot for them to moving. Yeah. Quick in and out, but we got to crouch, we got to stand in the way, Mm -hmm. like this. Yeah. Trying to, like, nah, bro, it's a lot. That's number one for me. Like, please don't sit right there, especially if you got a big ass hat on, too. I say don't sit in the same spot for a while. Like more than like a minute or two. I move mm-hmm. around a lot. Is like talking about for guests? I'm saying for guests. Like what are the don'ts for guests? Like oh. don't do not do this. I'm talking about, I'm talking about talk. uh like things you would tell guests do not do. Don't look at the camera. <laughs> Facts. Yeah. That's a good one. You're not taking your picture. <laughs> no, I don't want to see you like in the background. Just but it's funny though, because I do that. Just because I'm a photographer, so I know you're gonna have to edit me out. Yeah. Whole bride coming up, and that's that's what I think about, especially weddings. Because like I said, y'all wedding photography is bride magazine quality. It's, it's extremely high quality. It's clear. Because like with wedding photography, like let's say wedding and editorial, wedding photography, you don't want glossy dream. You want clear mm-hmm. images. Now, when you're doing like the ring and the shoes and all that, like that's dreamy. But like the photography of the wedding, you want to see the tear coming down her face. You want to see the emotion, and that's clear. Like I want to see through the veil. Like go ahead, change that focus up so I can see her face through that veil. But the photography that you guys have done has been so great. But I feel like sometimes people, like when we're at weddings, we get like stupid for a second. Like we in the way, mm-hmm. the bride coming down the aisle. We like, hey girl, like why are you tapping her? <laughs> 
You gonna see her at the reception. I mean, like people be tapping the bride. She walking down the aisle. She waving at people. Ma'am, you will see her later. You're getting married. Get them together. Literally though. Like we have been some hood weddings. It just came out cool, but you definitely see. And yeah. We don't go. We don't go to wedding rehearsals. Right. Yeah, and it was a waste of fucking time. For Cause me. like y'all, I mean, cause y'all are there to capture the day, and so you definitely want to capture the you know moment, capture emotion, all of that kind of stuff. But like the guests, and then too, like what I would say to people is, these people have been paid out of the budget for this wedding. So they're gonna do their jobs regardless. Around you, through you, whatever. When those people get the pictures back, they're gonna be mad they only got a hundred good images. Cause you was in the picture, mm-hmm. you was over here. We should include that in the package of all the wedding rehearsals. So we know the yeah. shots. Yeah, we got because if you let me it, places go in. Very there. very good idea, <laughs> but like I just there. like I've been to I've been in weddings and I've been to weddings and Again, looking from a creative standpoint, not just a guest standpoint, it's I'm always like, oh. Or I've seen photographers at weddings, and I'm like, you don't want to get you, right. You want to get something right. But yeah. some certain certain photographers do have their own styles, and yeah. a lot of people aren't traditional. Okay. And I realized that where was that wedding that we shot? It was a VA. Where it was the female photographer. Uh. Yeah, she had on like jeans and some shit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and we doing the video, and I'm like, bro, what the fuck? She, she on her shit, and we can't say shit. So yeah, we just respect like, how people do shit, and then you see the, the after, right? And it's like, that's uh, yeah. I knew you should. <laughs> right. I knew they should just pay that. So if y'all could tell, like, if you could tell a, a person who's interested in wedding photography, what would be some things you would suggest to them? Like tips that they should do. Photographers. Yeah, photographers are just saying like, I want to do wedding photography. YouTube. Like, what would you tell them? YouTube. Well, yes, YouTube, well, but yeah. like. Nah, because it's it's certain shit that I can't say off the top of the brain just because I'm not in the motion right now. Right. So I would say YouTube because you can study that shit. Like mm-hmm. you can watch a video as many so times and practice. You say YouTube, but like, what are some things when you're shooting a wedding that you look for? Like, what what is what is something that to your eye says capture this? Like what are some triggers? That shit that I would want to see. Okay. I want to say we work together for a period of time where it's like, I know what he's trying to shoot, mm-hmm. his angle, and he know mine. So it's like, if I didn't get it, he got it. So okay. It's like, just move around and try to be as creative as possible, right. but still highlighting the groom and bride. The bride and groom. Yeah, the, the people in the front. <laughs> get, make sure you get them out the way. The niggas with yeah. the rings. Because, like, yeah, like, the the one y'all did is, I think it's, was it like a military wedding? Yes, it was. Yeah. That shot was, well, one, because you always see the sword shot. And I think mm. because it's so good, it's kind of hard to mess up that shot. But because it looks good. So even if you do, like, a crappy picture of it, it's kind of like, ooh, the swords. Yeah. But, like, the way y'all captured it, it was it was really, like, crispy. So it's like you see it and like you get the respect of the military in it, all the uniform, like you get the, That's, it was focused on you, like you see the uniforms and like you get serious. the swords and all of that. But then you see this woman, like it's all, and still, even though this is very crisp, you still get the softness of the dress. She, she doesn't look like super fine, like right. hard. So it's like, yo, this is perfect. Cause he get what he want. Cause those his men. You know, they they right. look good, they sharp, and then she's like, okay, cool. I don't look a hundred. Bet. But like, good, that was that was really good. That was really was good. Bad. With them throwing rice and shit, that we had to run. Yeah. <laughs> it was, why? Just get them. Nah, you keep going because we don't talk like that. We I know. Like that. We don't yeah. talk at all. I haven't heard Ma say this many I haven't heard <laughs> say this many words as I've known him. <sighs> this is several words. You can drop this junk and like Six years, bang. <laughs> yeah, but like the the wedding photography has been really good, and I guess we can from from that like let's talk like the, you know the IG model or the boudoir photography, if you will. I've seen a lot of that content from you guys, and like I said, it's not because if we're honest, it's not very hard to take pictures of a beautiful woman. She's beautiful. Mm-hmm. She got a nice body. It's it's not difficult, which is why I think so many people do it mm-hmm. because literally it's not. 
necessary. They make it not about them. Like they capturing her, the right angle, the right look. You know, they their picture is viral not because of them. Yeah. It's because mm-hmm. of the woman. So doing that, like, tell me what goes into those shots? Because pe- I'm sure a lot of people think like, all right, I'm gonna just give me a woman who's real thick, put her in this, and. A, B, like like we talked about earlier, the one, two, three. Like, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Get a dope girl, put her on a colorful background and some underwear. Done. What are what are some things that when you get that call? Okay, we want you to do my shoot. What what's the process you go through from complete or for complete that? Like, okay, that's the question. Cause you don't be having shit. <laughs> I'm not lying. You laughing dead ass serious, <laughs> bro. Like they don't have. So it's like I want to do the. I want to do a boudoir shot. They saying I want to do it, and then bro, they don't have anything on themselves. Do. They don't even know what they want to wear. They don't know no. what color. They don't know what what accessories. They don't bro, know. He's not with lighting, bro. They don't want to do shit, but show up and look good. And then nine times out of ten, they make up be shit. Oh. Because they don't want to invest in the shoot. So they don't want to invest in that makeup artist, so they, I do it myself. Yeah, please don't. <laughs> yeah, please yeah. don't. Please come out. But past that, it's more so just talking to them and figuring out how they want to look and then doing what we can to make them look as close to that because they're not, they don't know what It's hard to me to tell you how to look and you don't even know how you want to look. Right. I can't make you feel a feeling. That's very true. It's hard as a photographer to tell. I can direct you, but it's hard to like, like you said, make you. F- I can tell you what to do, but even if you don't feel that, if I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, put your head back and kind of arch your back, mm-hmm. but it, it's sometimes it's just like literally, uh, you follow the direction, so you your arch is weird, mm-hmm. your head is too far back. Yeah, everybody got it though, at the same time. So, but you want to do it, like you. <laughs> You might be pretty, yeah. but you ain't got no sex appeal. So that that sexy pose that you're trying to do, why you arching your back? Right. You should, you, sit, you should sit like this with your legs crossed. Yeah, like that's not your that's not your yeah. that's not your thing. Like yeah, that's exactly. not your bag. But that's the funny thing about I feel like with boudoir photography, like it, you know, it, it didn't used to be as big as it is because you just, you had certain models that mm-hmm. would do it. Like not even the IG girls, that wasn't even a thing. It mm-hmm. was literally like Black Men's Magazine back in the day. Jet Beauty was like one of the OGs of like that type of photography, (laughs) glamour photography is what they call it. But like the Jet Beauty glamour photography was literally a woman in a swimsuit and it was like the editing, it was like matte or close to flat. It wasn't, the makeup was, I'm sure they had a makeup artist, but it was, it was simple. It was about. And it was like what, like three pages, maybe five? The Jet Beauty was just a one page. Nah, it was just, nah. it was a it was more? time where they it was had, a town like a couple Shut up. I just remember the one because you would like flip through to the staple because like the staple like yeah, that's exactly. it was a like jet beauty was. and I knew right. people whose like sister was a jet beauty because like Crazy. people from the city was in jet yeah, beauties yeah, yeah. like they they on show you where they from yeah, yeah. so you, you see DC you be like hey yeah. who is that yeah. like and we was kids oh, then but it was like hey who is who is a uh, but yeah, like so you see like the Jet Beauty then like with Black Men's Magazine was a big thing. They started with like the glamour, so it was like a little lingerie or like leather stuff and heels and hair. And then you move forward to like, you know, you seeing like the um Bria Miles and those kind of girls start popping up and you like, oh, like we we on a different page now. So you see other girls who see that as a way, like, okay, cool. I look, I'm shaped like them. Oh, I'm about to get in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you jump into it, not realizing that Bria and all of them, while they are built like that, they show up on set like, okay, I'm going to do this. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do that. Like, they know what to do yeah. when they put the lingerie on. And they're acting. And, and they're they like, what poses to do. Right. Yes. They're actresses. Boy, they're they're the actresses. Model of our time. <laughs> they're actresses. And I think people leave that part out of modeling. Like, you're an actress. So if some, if you have on lingerie or you have on, if you're nude and you 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 hold different things like you're an actress. That's really what we were talking about maybe like a couple of days ago. Mm-hmm. Like letting the client know like you have to have on basically you're an actor. Like mm-hmm. you have to play the role so the picture comes out how you want. Not mm-hmm. just smile because you think you need to smile. No, you gotta like be into the smile for mm-hmm. it to look genuine. So, right. 
gotta feel it. Cause it's like, if you're doing a post like this or some shit, you can't have no gut expression. Like, right. Yeah, you look stupid. Cause it, you feel that shit. And that's the thing, like, it reads, the camera tells no lies. Exactly. The camera never lies. So when you look crazy, if you feel crazy in your face, chances are it looks crazy. Not right. always though. Cause sometimes that awkward pose, especially if we direct you to do that awkward oh, pose, yeah. Yeah. It's, it don't look crazy. It looks exactly how we need it to look. But see, that's direction crazy. Like if it's awkward and they direct you to do something, you're like, this feels weird. But they like, listen, I'm telling you it looks good. That's completely different than right. if you feel if you feel like they're telling you, okay, give me sensual, and you do something and you feel like this don't feel sensual, it's probably not. Yeah, that's common sense though. Because you feel like awkward and you yeah, like you, feel off. you have on lingerie or if you're nude on set, if you don't feel sen- that's your body. Mm-hmm. Like we can't get in your body and be like, okay, move here, see. Like you have to feel that. But like I said, I, I think that the the hallmarks of what you guys have done with the boudoir shots is that all of the women, whether they're like heavily tatted or no tats or long hair, heavy makeup, no makeup, it's always the best version of that particular woman. Because you see some of them, some photographers that do like glamour shots or glamour modeling. And all the women had the same edits, the same features, mm-hmm. the same. So even though there's light skin, dark skin, brown skin, Middle Eastern, all of the women look the same because they edit and Photoshop them into the same. They like that shit. Oh, of course, because that's the thing. That superficial shit. That's the thing. Everybody looks soft. Everybody got the same color in every fucking shot. And that shit shows us all because it's like that's that repetition. That's that lack of creativity. That's the whole. They're just capturing. They're not creating. And that's the. That's like with the Facetune thing. Like when somebody told me that I I didn't believe it until they said that like when you download Facetune, they literally it was it's been articles about it. Like all of the these different women on Instagram download Facetune and they make their faces all look the same. There's Photoshop to make their bodies look the same because this is what gets me into the pipeline. Mm -hmm. So if I look this way, I get swept into the, I'm on the Explore page, I'm in the, I'm getting the brand endorsements, I'm getting all of that. But you, in real life, when people see you, they don't recognize you. And I forgot, it was some page, a friend of mine had reposted a couple of, maybe last week sometime, and it was showing the IG picture and then showing like people capturing them like at a concert or whatever. So the the one lady was a singer. She's at a concert. The picture she posted, she got small waist, breasts are nice and full, face all is great. Then somebody else takes the picture and it's like a little under, it's like a little chin here, breasts not as big, this part is not as cinched in, thighs are skinny. So it's like. We don't even know who you are on stage because that's not who we see. I think that's just a self-confidence thing. Very insecure. And I I get that, but I guess like to it would well, I guess what I don't understand is that I guess it's like you had a whole and I hate to, you know, be that guy because they say stay out of women's business. But you see one thing is like we, we talk about like Lizzo and the body positivity movement. Lizzo's out here like, yo, this is my body, this is who I am. If y'all like it, cool. If not, y'all can get on. Mm-hmm. And so you have women like that out here who's like, yo, it's room for all of us. However, you got it, like it's you. And then it's a whole group of people saying, nah, we want to <laughs> all look. Mm-hmm. And you don't hear the thing, and you don't really look like that. You, this is a whole bunch of apps that have created you to be this way. You're living based off of this image when somebody sees you in public and you're like, oh yeah, I'm X, Y, and Z. And they're like, no, you're not. <laughs> I just seen her on Instagram. Like, you don't, that's not you. And you're like, no, this is me. Nah. Trust me. Change it. And it's, it's crazy. Like, as photographers, like, how do you all feel when somebody comes to you? Or what, what do you do? How do you feel? When somebody comes to you with something that is completely off the rails as to who they are. Like they want you, they want you to make them look this way or shoot mm-hmm. this way and you like, that is not gonna work for you. Um we can't fix cystic acne. Okay. That's all I'm gonna say. 
Cause that shit right there is a problem. And motherfuckers think, oh yeah, you got Photoshop, you can edit like certain small pimples and shit. Yeah, mm -hmm. but yeah, the shit that be like, be like, give me your skin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot of work to do that, and then you're not gonna look like yourself. And I'm not about to put out some shit that you looking like. We don't support. fucking. Yeah, bald egg. No, you got like a, a airbrush face. Yeah, like, and again, I think that speaks back to the fact of if you if you have like skin issues or you want something that's like beyond, like if you gain a little weight but you want to look a certain way, mm -hmm. like I've worked with from the stylist standpoint, I'm like, listen, if you want to do that, you need to wear foundation garments, you need to put on spanks, all of that. Do because I always tell people. The post is going to cost more mm -hmm. than if you pay the stylist to help you on the front end. Yeah, just do your due diligence. Because if you put on Spanx and we got you in a girdle and you got a, a great makeup artist, that gives the photographer that much more of a foundation to work with to do what you ask them to do. Mm -hmm. But if you show up, no foundation garments on, subpar makeup, and then you tell them, like, yo, I want the Beyonce cover shoot. Well, it's going to cost much more in post because he got to create something that's not there. Whereas if you get a stylist, you get a good stylist, good makeup, a good wig. Oh, the photographer's job is pretty much easy because I just got to finesse just a little bit. what you've already done. But it's it like I said, it goes back to what we were talking about with that, with what you put in. You got to put in a whole lot on the front end. Or you're gonna pay for it on the back end, like you, you gonna pay the money either way, whether you pay the good makeup artist or you don't, because the photographer is essentially gonna have to edit good makeup, mm -hmm. and you'd hope that they can, because some photographers would be like, I don't do that, I don't do that kind of edit, I, I just, do that. and so you looking like, well, I wanted my, and yeah, sorry. sorry. And I had I've worked I've worked with clients who like have done different types of shoots and I'm like, yo, I'ma help you out. Like I'm gonna give you the look you want. Mm -hmm. but what I'm gonna tell you is invest in you some good shapewear. And every single time I've said that and they follow suit, when we got the final pictures back, they were like, Oh my gosh, thank you. Because the photographer was like, Oh cool, you want that? Oh I could I could just airbrush that out. Oh I could just I'll put that up. But y'all gave y'all y'all good with this. But then if we just come in there crazy, they like Fee, a lot of work to do. And I tell that post fee, it you think it's not a lot until you give the photographer all this. You see the raw images, and then you want to you tell the photographer, okay, I want these edits, mm -hmm. and he's like, oh, got it, cause see Her his, image, come on, because mm -hmm. I also want forty images from the shoot. Okay, I want forty okay. images, and I want all of them edited, and I want this and the third. Okay. And you want all of this. Not being considered of the fact that the photographer has other projects, mm -hmm. other shoots. So if I have to devote time to your post, the time that I had allotted, which is one to two hours, I mean one to two days for your post edits. If I have to extend that, now you have to pay me because I, I have to take time away from other mm -hmm. stuff. And I think that's the part that a lot of people don't seem to understand with shooting. At that point, though, you just charging your raw fee. Because mm, you want 40 pictures, bro. We was giving 40 pictures back in 2016. Facts. Like, that's. Now you. It's now. It's, but that was preset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The whole batch in fact. Gone. Now it seems like. I mean, standard is about 10. Like, you get 10 strong shots. But. See, I'm not going to hold you, though. Like, we don't even. We try to limit the shots. Now. Yeah. To where it's like. We go in that, but that's the evolution of how we like grew. Like, yeah, as you could say, because we went from taking two hundred shots each per shoot, sending them eighty fucking pictures. Whereas now we try going with the I want to capture this shot. This is the one shot that I gotta capture. Yeah, everything else is just play, and I can end it whenever I yeah. whenever I'm ready for yeah. it. That's how it be. Because honestly, like when you get content, like for me, when I get content back, as long as what I what I saw in my head is there. Like the one, like you say, that one image. As long as the what I wanted is there, the other stuff is accessories. Like I can either use it for future content, or I can do, you know, I can make this a little carousel on Instagram, or I can use this in the story. But you really don't like forty edited images 
unless you're doing like a lookbook or some sort of project, yeah. you're gonna you're not even gonna use that, and it's a waste of money because you're gonna pay for them, yeah. and then you pay seven eight hundred dollars for forty edited images or more. Because I've known people who charge six hundred. I shouldn't be saying who's pricing, but anyway, I didn't say who. Anyway, they charge six to seven hundred dollars for the shoot. Just for the shoot. The experience. Mm-hmm. Like these, this is you I'm showing with, up. Bye, 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 bye. Thank you for coming. Then they have a edit. They send you the, the gallery with all with the little watermark. Okay, you pick your 10, 15 images. Pick, 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 send. They send it to somebody else who's charging another four to five hundred dollars to professionally edit, bring the light up, bring the light down, uh, bring your chin up, do the, they all doing all of that. All of so your shoot in total is costing you anywhere from 12 to 15, sometimes upwards $1,700 for your shoot. So, and that's maybe 10, that's 10 quality images, mm-hmm. different looks, different shots, yeah. all of that. So it's like, you have to really look at the investment of to me, you want forty images off one look is ridiculous. Nobody sees it as an investment anymore because everybody, everybody's a photographer, not an artist. So it's like the same thing. They want the shot by sauce, but they don't want to pay the shot by price. Whereas they gonna pay Billy price, and Billy gonna take them pictures. <laughs> That's that. So they not, they don't care as long as they get the shit done. And you have to know, to me, you have to know, like, there's different photographers that I work with for different reasons and for different things. And you have to respect each photographer's strengths and weaknesses. Because some photographer's weakness is what you need in that moment. Like, I need your strengths for this shot, and I need another photographer's strengths for that shot. And what one photographer is weak on, another photographer is stronger on, you know, vice versa, but... I think people need to really look... One, I think people need to respect photography as an art. And if you learn to respect photography as an art, it saves you from working with people who are capturers. I'm going to say that's not going to happen in the long run because of Instagram. Mm-hmm. And, and because it's, it's, it's easy to get a tripod mm-hmm. and iPhoneography is a thing and you can get a camera and set it up. And I think, honestly, I think camera companies and the like are making a mint off of People, you know, because we'll we'll show you the starter and we'll give you the tutorial. If you pay us thirty dollars a month, uh, we we got classes that you can act like. The photography companies are making money because now they got online portals set up for you to yeah. learn photography when it's literally just basic things that if you just take your camera and shoot, you'll learn. But like for me, if I go Google stuff about my camera, I'm looking at how to change focus. I'm looking at how to make the image brighter or darker. Like I'm looking at the nuances of the camera as opposed to how, like, I know how to take a picture. I know what I want to see. I just want to, I want to see the image like it's in my head. So I'm looking to fine tune the skill, but I feel like, like you said with Instagram, it's a lot of people that just want, I want to capture this. So I'm going to go to Cancun and we're going to take all these dope pictures and I'm going to just, they, they posting up like, Every day we can go to the we can go to the fall tomorrow. We're gonna take pictures. Nobody's trying to get the slow picture so you can see the water fall or so you can stand under the waterfall. But like you're in focus, but the waterfall is out of focus. Yeah. It's just like stand in the waterfall. Boom, got you posted. No. You just wasted experience. Yeah. Or sometimes, and I I like to tell people this because this is the thing I believe. Sometimes you don't need the shot. Just enjoy the experience. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. Sometimes you just don't, don't. Because you can't capture in the image what you're feeling. Like how the moment means to you. It's just, so just put the camera down. Mm-hmm. And you got to know when to accept that. Yes. Because a lot of people will force it and still try to either put it out or make the picture happen. And it's like, you're trying too hard, that's not it. And it comes across. Like yeah. like we said about if the, if the model is awkward in the photo, if a photo is forced, you can tell. Right. It could be super beautiful, but you like this is extremely posed. Like you got the angle, and you like, yeah, you just really want to post this. And some, even as artists and photographers, like I see images all the time in my head. I'm like, 
if I had a, if I had a, a Snapchat glasses, I would take so many more pictures because I'm literally seeing just a random shot. I'm like, that would be beautiful. Like that's framed perfectly. But sometimes it's just for you to enjoy and take in mm-hmm. and just move on. It's just for you. Like everything isn't everything isn't supposed to be captured. And I think that as artists, we are the only ones who can destroy the consumer culture. Of just being like, mm. consume, consume, consume. I'm not putting it out. And if you starve, then you didn't want my art. Because mm. good food, when you go to a restaurant for good food, yeah, you wait for them to make the steak. You wait for them to bring the a la carte size. And when it comes, you enjoy the food. You're not wolfing it down like a burger and fries or a quick carry out meal. When you sit down with the white napkins and nice wine selection or nice drink, you enjoy it and you mm. savor the moment. And it's like, if I want my art to be savored, I can't worry about the algorithm. Right. If you follow me or unfollow me based on it, you probably weren't my crowd anyway. Right. But I think we have to be the ones responsible for destroying it. Because I'm not posting because you like it. I'm not going to post this and do this and that. Like, and me and Nick have talked about, like, you know, post a poll or do that kind of stuff. Like, when you produce, when you post, like, certain content. And I'm down for pushing the fullness of my content when I post it, but... I'm not doing that every day and coming up with a campaign. Like, because I'm, then I'm exhausted as an artist. Yeah, yeah you're doing that shit, though. You're doing too much. Yeah. And then, and I mean, I do it, and I like the engagement. Like, I think it's dope, but, like, I never want to get to the place where, like, you feel like you have every to. day. Cause yeah, that's what I'm saying. You was doing that shit, though. Like, quarantine, early quarantine, you were doing that, like, every day. And it was, every, and it was good, and what I noticed about it, again, with the consumer culture is, people liked it, and it was dope, and I got followers up, and I got engagement, but, like, when me and Nick did the shot with the old car, everyone's like, oh, my God, this is so oh, this car, oh, this is dope, oh, I like your shoes, oh, I like that, and I'm like, oh, thank you so much, oh, my man shot it, tag Nick in the shot, everybody, like, oh, it's great, woo, 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 woo. Next week, it was like, oh, yeah. my God, I love this shot. This is so cool. Yeah. I, okay. Yeah. And, like, I like the shot because of what went into it. Like, we pulled up on this random car. It wasn't random. Well, it, it, <laughs> it, it, wasn't random. it was <laughs> random to me. But, like, we pulled up on the car. We doing the shoot. Like, I'm super nervous because I'm like, I don't know whose car this is. I want these people to come out and shoot me. Right. <laughs> so, the lady, the person whose car was, her, uh, his niece came out. And she was like, oh my goodness, y'all are taking pictures by the car. And I'm, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> okay, we, we bought that a scrap with this old lady. <laughs> and she was like, my uncle just brought that up from South Carolina. And she said, I love to see young people appreciating older things. She was like, do whatever y'all need to do. And I'm like, wow, okay. So we finished the shoot or whatever. And I like the shoot for the for the fact that like it pushed me to be confident. It pushed me out of my comfort zone. It was a story behind mm-hmm. it. Like Nick banged the shots. So I liked it and I put it out and people were like, oh, this is great, whatever. And I'm like, y'all need to appreciate these shots all week long. Do you know how <laughs> dope this was? Yeah, see, that's the experience though. Like, yeah. you that was your first time experiencing like somebody just coming out to see what you're doing type shit. I mean, but I've I've done gorilla shoots before. And so it's What's cool. A gorilla, shoot? gorilla shoot is like if you just pop up somewhere and start shooting. Oh, we call that pull up and shoot. <laughs> same, same thing. I mean, I've done it before. You see a dope spot, you be like, "I'm right, gonna come back tomorrow. We gonna shoot. It. Everybody get dressed, hop out the car, boom, 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 we done." But like, I learned like one, I digest art differently. Like, I I digest all art like a meal. Like that shot y'all was talking about, I still I can recall it in my head right now because I really like the color. I like the. It was just a fire shot to me. But, like, I still consume the art that I love on a daily basis. Like, I don't need to see new stuff. I don't even listen to new music. I still listen to 90s R&B, uh, Motown, because the old stuff still works for me. But I get that the culture that I'm a part of or producing for is, like, oh, so you're going to wear, like, do you have the new stuff? Or, like, what are you going to wear? And I'm like, yeah, I like new stuff, but... Yeah, okay. Yeah, you still appreciate the old. But I feel like you know, and that's the one thing I think with like shot by that is unique is because when you see the the team of shot by, you think okay they're gonna do this because you see like young people, you see like all right they're gonna give me this art, mm-hmm. and you can y'all can, but the crazy part is what would be expected from y'all you almost never do. Elaborate on like we never see like. 
super modern, like flashy, glossy images from y'all. We do on rare occasions, but most of the stuff is like Hype Williams type or like the 90s music, like the, the dream videos. It's like 90s videos, like when videos were like you you on, you following a story. Mm -hmm. It's not just like money throwing in the camera, cheeks in the camera, the dude in a bathtub with champagne for some reason. Like you like this doesn't make it be cohesive. Like this doesn't make any sense. And then you see y'all stuff and it's like, oh yeah, these dudes seen music yeah. videos back when they was on TV. If you like pay attention, you can understand why we did certain things. Right. Yeah. And it's like you look at a lot of videos now and it's guns, cheeks, money, champagne. Champagne, cheeks, money, guns, a wide shot of the artist with a car that's probably not his, and then fade to black. And so you like, okay. But then you see y'all stuff and it's like, it's 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 more cinematic. And that's what I'm saying. Like when you see the group of shot by, if you see everybody in shot by all together, like just dressing their own individual style, and then you see their the work that comes from y'all, you'd be like, how they did that? Because it doesn't look like what we would see come from this group of people. But again, I think that's part of misjudging artists. Because you might see a, one of y'all could be an opera singer. Wouldn't know that. But then you, you hear the dude open his mouth and you be like, dang, that's what he do? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I think that's that's the that's one of the, the reasons why I really always like, I personally like working with Shot By a lot because it always pushes me out of my comfort zone because I'm always like, dang, they really, like, I didn't even think of that. And I'm like older. Like, I should have thought that. I should have knew that. But it's like, dang, these dudes are really studied artists. So it causes you to step up when you come to somebody like that. Because you know they're expecting more of me as an artist. Like, they not coming to the games with cameras and like, all right, what you want to do? It's like, nah, this is what we about to shoot. This is what I need from you. I already know you on your game, so this is what I expect from you. And you like, dang, I feel like I'm in class. Like, I feel like I'm a student. But as a creative, that's comforting to me because I don't have to come to the shoot and do everything. Yeah. It's refreshing sometimes for me to just be talented. Yeah. Like, I just show up. Like, when me and Nick shot those, uh, the, the orange scarf joints, it was so dope because I was like, yeah, we shot outside. Even when we did that, like, the, the shoot in the summer with the little polka dot shirt, like, it was dope because I knew what I wanted. But I'm like, I'm going to tell you what I want. He was like, all right, bet. And he took it from there. I was like, cool. I'm, I'm great. I'm great. I remember that with the Oculus. Because that's all I want to do. Like, that's I just want to show up. Sometimes as a, as a creative, I want to show up, be shot, and leave. Yeah. When you don't have to do a lot, you just have to feel appreciated. You it's refreshing. Flow. And then it, 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 it causes me, like, the next time I do something, like, I'm, I have yeah. energy to, like, contribute. Because I'm not, like, Damn, like I, 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 need to do shit. I did that They're shoot. Like, I had to do this. Shit. I had to do this. I had to do that. And it's, it's refreshing sometimes to just come in a room and vibe or be in a situation and vibe and just leave, like, with the same energy I came with. Like, I didn't have to do everything. And I think that's one of the dope the dope things about shot by is like you get out of it way 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 more than you give because y'all come with such a team energy it's like when you show up you like oh i didn't it's just you but you got a whole team of people so i'm gonna do this we'll go here we're gonna shoot this we got video over here we got this over here you like oh cool yeah. and i think that's the that's to me a hallmark of shot by that you don't see often is shot by is a team of different people different everybody's differently talented with different skill sets but it works you never see the separation even though it's a team of people and you know everybody has different skills or it's like 50 different cameras on set it's a microphone over here it's a polaroid camera right here it's a camera from the 60s right here and you're like i don't even know what that one does but when you see everything together in the package you're like Dang, I would have never thought to do this. Mm. And that's the thing. So how do y'all manage the team? Because it because you don't see teams a lot. Mm. You see teams start, but like, because, you know, like the whole YBN situation, they was all together. Mm. And then it was like, oh, no, I don't mess with you. So how do y'all keep the team together? I want to say it's accountability on my part. As, as much as like, 
if he's not good at something, he would, he'd be like, fool, I don't do this, I'm not good at it. Therefore, I'm not going to expect that from him. Mm-hmm. So whatever we bring to the table, that's what we go off of. And we just grow up in it. Right. I'm not going to hold you. When we argue about two things, so we about to eat, <laughs> we about to make some money. So it's, it's not a question in regards to, I'm not even going to say it like that. I'm going to say everybody played their part. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> since it's so many of us, it's okay that two might not be here because we still know how to maneuver if it's only just two of us. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's like, it's never a point where it's like, oh, damn, damn, we need Ty here because we can't capture it. Nah, we're going to get that shit done. Right. So how do you decide who takes the lead or is there ever a lead? No, nah, we got different roles, so we just we lead our own role. Right. Yeah. So that's like, <clears throat> for instance, shooting a wedding, if it's just me and Fool, or Fool and I, we literally, all right, I'm about to get these, I'm going to get these, what two lenses you got? All right, I got these two, all right, I'm going to get these two. All right, all right what, what shots you about to, what you focusing on today? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I got bride and groom, I'm, I'm on the main, and X, Y, and Z. All right, I'm on guest, I'm playing the back. All right. So it's, it's. So everybody has their job. Yeah. That makes sense. That's how a team works, right? Everybody got a position. Right, but you know, you, you always, and I mean, not always, but you, you always kind of say, okay, this person's the leader. This is the kind of director, but it makes sense when you look at the success of your team that everybody plays a role because there is no leader. I'm leading my role. I can say it, it's like this to where if I'm late to a shoot or I'm not at a shoot and I'm on my way and he already started to shoot, I can come in and take over, or not even take over, but I can step in, and mm-hmm. they can't tell, like, oh, yeah. damn. It looks different now. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Like, mm-hmm. they know, like, oh, that's how they work. Yeah. It was a point where we were shooting at the same exact time, like, over each other's shoulder, under each other, in front, behind, like, we was like shot. that, and it worked. So it's like, now we can, I definitely say we cool it out on that, though. So we just like take time, like, all right, I'm gonna look at his shots after he finished. Mm-hmm. Like, all right, I see what you didn't get, I'm gonna get that. Right. And that's how we can move it. But that makes sense. Like like I said, I've the work I've seen y'all, you never can, when you see the shot by a brand, unless somebody specific tagged a, a, a picture or tagged a video, you don't know. You just know it. it's the same quality no matter what it's produced. But you never see like, okay, Maul shot these. Oh yeah, no, nah, Maul is a face. Nick shot these. Don't get it fucked up. <laughs> Maul is a face. Uh, Shouts out to Maul the fool. Fuck them other niggas on game. Oh <laughs> man, it's a new day. It's a lot behind that. We don't talk about it though. I'm, I'm gonna say this. I will, I will speak facts to a client mm-hmm. so they understand like I'm someone you can talk to. I'm the point man. Like you come to me if you yeah, we, you you can. More than that, face. but I'm gonna just say I'm gonna out talk. That's it. I'm the customer service. <laughs> I don't want to be, nah, but I wouldn't even say talk like, like that. That's it. Yeah, niggas ain't even carry that shit. There's none of that. Like nah. for a minute, we was just winging everything. Mm-hmm. So it's like the business side, whatever sounds right. We gonna go with it. Right. Yeah. We going wow. Yeah. Like, literally. But it, I mean, it makes sense because, like I said, like you, when you see the shot by page, or when you see the work, you never, the work is different depending on like the subject or the genre, but you see the same quality thread through everything, mm-hmm. and the quality is the same whether it's like a big military wedding or if it's a small wedding in the backyard. Like the wedding in the backyard looks just as dope as this big church with mm-hmm. all of this in it. Yeah. So like the quality is the same. And I think like it speaks to what you said about the, the team. If, if the team is here, everybody has a role and we're all good in our roles. So you get the same quality as this person because this is what we do. Oh, I'm not chiming on that too though. But don't get it like misconstrued as to where, oh, if the whole team's not there, you're not going to still get that same quality. No, that's what I'm saying. Okay, yeah. Like no matter... Whether if the team if the team in whatever form, whether yeah. it's the whole team or partial, you get the same quality because this is gonna be there. this is the brand. Like you never and also to that same point, you never see shot by is us and them. It's mm-hmm. always shot by as like it's always 
the team. Yeah. It's never, oh, it's just us two, oh, it's four of us, mm-hmm. oh, it's 17 of us, it's 100 of us. Yeah. You never really know how many people belong to shot by or how many nobody seen before. you yeah. don't know but like the quality or the level that everybody produces from like if you see rail do sports photography or gym photography it's insane yeah. like it's good quality it's crispy it's clean like you feel like the sweat about to pop off on you right. but i've never seen y'all do it but i have no doubt that if one of y'all stepped behind the camera you wouldn't see the difference the between yeah, a rail, you know what I'm saying? Like you wouldn't see a, sh- a rail shot and then be like, "Oh, Maul shot that because it looked." You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, that was the funny thing too, because that was by accident. Because mm-hmm. it was like Vernon hit me. He was like, "Yeah, I need you there." I'm like, "I can't. You book. Let me ask Benji. Mm-hmm. You trying to get in the gym? Fuck it. Yeah, bro, I did that motherfucker just like that. Proceed. Yeah, but that's the thing. Like you don't. It's the same. It's like the training, the ability to work across different fields is evident in everybody's work. Mm-hmm. Because you never see like, this is the quality. This is what we know. If you're going to be shot by, this is what we do. This is the level that we perform at. If you can't do that, then it's no place for you here. Yeah. But not, it's not going to do that to motherfuckers though because we respect everybody's level. Yeah, but, but you never good. see, you never see the, if somebody's learning, as an outsider, as a person looking at the art, you never see that. We don't know that they're learning. I'm I'm gonna chalk it up to us just being thorough niggas. Yeah. To not like push nobody down because they fucked up. Like, yeah. listen, when you do this, like try to think of this or why you doing it or just just try something new. That's yeah, really just it. Fool them, yeah, throughout. But that's why everybody baby five in a sense because it's like like for instance, not the not the pinpoint rail, but. Bro, it was around us so much that it was just like, I got to do this now. Yeah. Like, yeah. oh, yeah, I'm about to buy my camera. Which one y'all think I should get? All right, cool. And right. then we taught him how to be creative and not just be a capture, be a creative, be yeah. an artist for real. Because it was a point where niggas were taking pictures like this, like, <laughs> grab the camera and yeah. just hold it. Uh-huh. Like, no, no <laughs> focus, none of that. Oh, it's on auto. Right. So <laughs> everything? Auto everything? Yeah, it just... I'm just here. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, so I don't get fine. Literally, though. But I mean, that's, and I think, again, that goes to, like, for me, a lot of stuff that f- informs my eye is fashion photography or, like, older shots. And I'm like, oh, I like this angle. Or, like, if I have the grid on, like, I always want to shoot, like, off, slightly off that off the lines because I don't mm-hmm. want the shot to look like Olin Mills. Mm-hmm. But that's me. And I like when you see a photographer, it's like, it's a live shot like it gives me something instead of like you said even with a gym shot like it's super easy to capture because they work and now it's kind of like there for you you just right. take the picture but then when you get an action shot you can literally see like the fire in somebody's eyes when they mm-hmm. take off you like yes this is what i'm this is what i'm talking about yeah. or to a boudoir shot you can see the fact that like you feel turned on looking at the shot you like yeah that's what i want or you watch a music video and you feel like you're in the lyrics, the the movement to, of the camera and everything. You feel like, oh, I'm a part of this. Like, I'm gonna download this song because I'm a part of. Like, I feel like I'm gonna be in it. I think that's the really unique thing to shot by is that every piece of work is always alive. It's never just like a flat image. Even even as a even as a flat image. Like you look at like the the pictures on like Ma's wall. It's not flat. They flat images on the wall, but you can look at each picture and be like, I think about yeah. something when I see this. So I look at that and I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah. That's really what I, my aim is. Because yeah. a flat image is, is dead. Like, yeah. I don't think any photographer, living or dead, would ever want somebody to say like, oh, that's a really great picture. And you're like, yeah, but you know, that day, blah, 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 blah. They're like, yeah, great picture. He like, all right. Mm-hmm. Like, but some people just appreciate shit for what it is, though. And facts. I, I've had to come to understand that. Just as like people be like, I love that picture. You be like, why? Like, what's that? <laughs> and like, I don't know. I just like, I just like yeah. how the picture looks. And, and it's hard not to get offended by. Some that. people like, can't. Art- I've learned, and again, like you said, because I'm one. I'm super analytical, and I happen to be a creative, so it's even worse. I will ask those same questions. 
and then because I want you to tell me, but some people can't articulate. Like as artists, we're t- part of what we do is learn because that's how we direct shoots. Like do this, like think of this moment and like give me that because we're that's how we inform art. But when you ask somebody else, like they're like, oh my god, I really love that picture. Like you said, and you say. Well, what about it stood out to you? How did it make you feel? Like the colors and like That's it. the way, like you know, like the way her hand was mm-hmm. like. So then you just leave them and be like, "Oh, so, so uh, the posing." <laughs> ah, okay, okay, okay. What about the direction? Did right. You, you think, but see, no? like another creative is like, cause he like gives me like I feel like the way the shadow was like gave me like a slight like she was depressed, but then yeah. like the light, the beam of light coming through in the back was like hope, and you're like yeah, yeah, it was the hope, and then like, get it, then, yeah, like you win it. it, but like most people, and that's I'm learning that lesson slowly. It's very difficult for me because I need you to feel, me. and when you mm-hmm. don't, like I've been really into since I watched Malcolm and Marie. Like, I have been, uh, the movie on Netflix with Zendaya and John David Washington. It's this movie on Netflix. It literally, it centers around them. They have this argument for the entirety. The whole movie, they're arguing. But it's different levels to, it's really dope. Like, it's, they argue throughout the whole movie, but it's like different levels to it. He's speaking, she's speaking. So you get to see kind of like the anatomy of an argument. But the whole movie is in black and white. So like, when I saw it, I was like, okay, everybody talked about it. I watched it. But like ever since then, I'm like, the power of a black and white image is crazy. Because you will never know what was in that image. You won't see the, unless I show you, you will not know. And so like I took one a day, a black and white image, and I was playing around with edits and stuff and kind of crisped it up a little bit. And I was like, this is insane to me. And I took a black and white image of the orchid in like, it was like maybe 2.33 o'clock. And I was like, I'm blowing this up. Because it was just so dope. Because you will never know this image, how it looked through my eyes. Because you only get to see it in black and white. And I'm like, yo, that. But like you said, if I showed it to somebody else, and they like, oh, <laughs> such a okay. great image. And I'm like, <clears throat> oh. <laughs> no, it's not a great image. Like, do you see the colors on the orchid and how, like, the black and white, like, it pops the like you don't even know what colors those are like mm-hmm. it doesn't like make you and then like because literally when I took the image I was focusing on when I turned the focus I was trying to make the purples really blotchy in that so I was trying to make it really crisp when I saw the image at the end because that's a window I noticed that in the bottom right of the image there was two people walking outside and because the focus was on the petals the two people were captured in the bottom right, but like blurred. I was like, oh, oh, oh my God, this is so dope. But if I showed it to somebody else and they didn't see the two people, I would be blown. Because now the whole image to me is about the two people in the bottom. Like, what's their story? I respect it. But like, I, understand I, it though. I totally, I, I can, if I couldn't agree with anything more, it's definitely that. Sometimes I don't even share art because of that. Because I know you're going to blow me mm-hmm. when I show it to you. So like, don't, even worry, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Period. That's funny shit. Now I feel like the picture I took depicted people. I don't know. I just be like, because <laughs> like the stuff I've shot with Nick, the stuff you've shot, I always, I feel a certain type of way about each one, and then when I post it, and it's like, they're like, oh, that's fire. I be hating. It. It's not. I'm, I'm about to start scrolling. I feel like I really gotta start scrolling. And so where like people people comment shit like that and it's like what makes you say that? Cause like I'll comment on people's stuff like because I appreciate because now I'm cognizant of what I say. So I will comment and say, Oh wow, this is great composition. I really like the colors and how you like cause I'm gonna tell you like because I feel like if you put it out there and then people be like, Wow, oh thank you so much. But I look at all the other comments, it's like six fire emojis, like uh hand claps, the muscles. I'm like, like, young, get, get off. I'm going to block you. Don't ever do that. <laughs> Stop leaving that on my page, but yeah, it. I'm going to start leaving comments like that. I'm telling you exactly why I like the picture. But can I do it as to exactly why I don't like the picture? Or is that hating? Instead of being a creative. So creative we should talk about that. Hating, Speak on it. 
hating in creativity and photography because what I've learned, it's just me, mm -hmm. there are times, especially as a photographer, as a stylist, all these things, constructive criticism is necessary to grow as an artist. Yes. People will not admit it, but it is. What I think, though, is that, <clears> one, <throat> to be creative, you have to have thick skin because you have to be able to take some time with this very harsh criticism because if you want to grow, people have to be able to tell you things. Mm -hmm. But I've learned, like a friend of mine and I have this talk about being a gatekeeper bully. I also have to learn that I can't be like a jerk to you in telling you just because I'm more experienced than you. Like, I'm not going to hurt you to tell you, but I am going to tell you, like, these images look flat and I don't like them. Yeah, but that's all you got to say. But I'm saying it in regards to if I say some shit like that. Mm -hmm. Because people know how I am, mm -hmm. that's hating. Yeah. Why you but hating on them? Why you say it like that? But I said it as plain as day. I told you exactly, very direct. But I think people one because I know you. You're direct. That's just you don't give a lot of sauce with it. You just say it. It's Why? just I don't like it. It's flat. And if that's not hating, that's just how you talk. Okay, so why is it that if I say some shit like that? It's it's viewed as such, but then niggas act like I'm not credible behind why I say it. Mm, I think this is what I think. Sometimes people people want you to soft walk things. Yeah, I'm no. sugarcoating. And no. I don't scratch no itches. To me, life. like sugarcoating, I, I feel like this. Sometimes if you if you somebody is new or you're introducing them to certain things, not sugarcoating it, but sometimes introducing them to criticism. In a way that they can take, because some people cannot take criticism until they've had enough to really develop a thick skin. Yeah, that's what made me start being more empathetic. So while I understand, but here's the thing too: I'm only going to soft walk you like a baby. You give babies the, the little taller shoes. You help them a few times. They fall. You be like, "It's okay. You can do it." But once they hit like two or three, you, gotta you fall down. Out. Like get up. Or don't like it's up to you, little dude. I'm not going, but I think people have to understand that that part of it. Like, if you don't get it at this point, maybe you don't want to. And that's what I think. Some people don't. They always want you to solve for it. Always tell me my photos are good. Always tell me my edits are great. I don't. I don't think that's a good. Like sugarcoating is good for anybody. Honestly, I got told by my older brother, uh, my shit was trash. <laughs> And I had to look at it, and I was like, maybe you're right. Right. And I didn't take no offense to it, but I was like, why do he think it's trash? And I had to look back and like, they're just basic images. Nothing stood out to him, but like, they're just images. And I'm like, okay, I see what he's saying. Yeah. They don't pop off the, the, the picture right. of the feeling. So it's like, I get it. But him just saying they're trash, it wasn't like, oh, he hated them. just like, why do you take it? And yeah. Let me look at it. But, but I did break it down. Though. And I yeah. think that's, that's what you have to do. As a creative, like some people don't like your work. One thing I had to accept is that some people will never like what I do, and that's fine. But I have to learn to discern between people that just don't like my work and people that are like, "Yo, I see better for you. Like you can do better." So don't put that out. Like it's people that I send images to that I'll do. Like I've sent Nick images. Like I'll be like, I'll be here. Like I think I'm getting to it. Like I am killing the game, and I'll be like, I right, bet. So I send the images, and it'd be like, thumbs down, thumbs down, thumbs down, thumbs down. And I'd be like, dang, I spent like four hours doing this. And he'd be like, no, it was too much light. I don't like that outfit. You can do better than that. Try again. Yeah. Well, but, I'm not, I'm that's the art. I'm going to pull up. But when you get that type of criticism, I'm never upset because if I didn't, if I didn't, Wanna, if I didn't want that, I would have sent it to him. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't send it to him for him to be like, oh my gosh, oh, this is amazing. One, he doesn't talk like that, so I would be shocked if he said that. And, <laughs> you know, like, oh the, the most he'll do is like, it'll be a thumbs up. He'll be like, good composition, maybe bring the contrast down. Like, it, that's his compliment. Mm -hmm. Like, the less he got to say is a compliment. But if he, if he got to say a whole bunch, he'll be like, these are horrible. I'm going to come up tomorrow. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I, must, I must have really killed this one. But then you get it. Because then when he get here, he be like, okay, you can do this. You can do that. Whatever, whatever. But that was that was the, the orange vest jump. I mean, yeah. the orange stock jump. You did yeah. it in the kitchen. Yeah. You did it. So I liked it. But I also understand that 
I was looking at it differently than when he saw. He was like, you can do this better. So, like I, like I said, I think as a, but that's what I go back to with the creatives having a thick skin. You have to be, a, if I want to get better and I'm sending it to somebody who I respect, I have to be open to the fact that they may say, this is not your best. Yeah. Or I can do this. You know what? This is something you need somebody else to shoot because you can't self-shoot this. Yeah. Like, let me help you do that. Okay, cool. Because you can't self-shoot everything. Some things you cannot self-shoot. Some stuff you need another eye because the way it looks or the positioning, you need somebody to tell you, pull this, hold that, whatever. But I think, again, it goes back to the, you have to have a thick skin to do this job, to be in this game. Like, it's not hating. Everybody. And that's one thing I had to learn. First of all, you don't even have enough, you don't have enough in you to be hated on. Like, what are we hating on? You don't have, it's nothing, you don't have no portfolio. Like, you can hate on me, but I've been published. So I'm not, I don't care that you talk about me. Or you can hate on me, but I've been paid to do this. So I don't care if you don't like it. But then if somebody I respect says, yo, you can do better. Like, you should have did this. You should have focused, whatever. Like, we have to learn the difference. Like, if we, if people really look at it, most of the times, they're not hating on you. It's very few. It's very, you have very few haters. If we're honest, it's very few people that hate on you mm-hmm. a lot of it is people telling you like you you living beneath your privilege mm-hmm. but because we don't want to really put the work in that it takes to be great every time somebody say something it's hate because i don't want to like if nick tell me something i need to do better i don't want to do that so i'm gonna say he a hater because that way i can dismiss what he said as hate as opposed to saying like well, he, he was right i do need to Work on my light, and oh, you know what? I should have called him over to shoot that because I kind of flooded that. We had an interview the other day when they like he shut up his phone in this dark corner. I'm like, bro, we got these lights right here, bro. Like, get in the <laughs> light, y'all missing it. And I was like, I don't know why that pissed me off. That they did that, you know, come on. But it's like when you care, you care, yeah, and then. What happened? We got in, in the light. That shit was that. It was that one for the light. Niggas was using the motherfucking auto joke right. <laughs> for the phone. Okay. But that's, I think that's the thing. Like, as a creative, you're one, you never get to the place where you are like, it is my personal opinion. I don't think you ever become an expert because you can always learn. So if you ever feel like you're at the top of your game, I feel like you're doing a disservice to whatever craft you have. If you feel like I am the best photographer, like I can know I'm developing presets at this point because I'm so good and you can't learn anymore. I'm like, uh, I don't feel like having your own presets is anything of value as a photographer. I agree. It's just me personally because like you're selling the look, you're not selling the eye, you're not selling anything. Other it's something to develop. And I think like uh, along with what you're saying. I think that now everything goes to monetizing something and making a product. So if I'm if I'm an influencer and I take no pictures, after a while I must develop presets so that y'all can do. It goes back to the Facetune thing. Yeah. I'm gonna develop something that you can literally take any type of image. I have these presets that get me a hundred thousand likes, and I get campaigns with these people. I'm gonna develop them, sell them to y'all. You're going to put these presets on your images. You probably will never get what I get because these are just presets. You don't see the fact that I'm sending pitch letters. You don't see the fact that I'm uh, maintaining relationships and networking. I'm only selling you the look of what I do. And I feel like that's that's cheap to me. Mm-hmm. Like if y'all said, if y'all, your art, yeah, because not everybody look like you. And so you got a bunch of sons out here. But at the end of the day, nobody's really getting to where you are because you're not telling them how to do it like y'all can do shot by presets it would probably it would probably go nuts but at the end of the day if we do it like if you did shot by we do our presets there would be people be like finally thank you lord i'm gonna just take any kind of picture mm-hmm. slap that mall blue five on there it's great and it is great but what you don't realize is mall only used blue that day because of x y and z reasons mm-hmm. so mall might start shooting with like a teal light and so now you're like Dang, that's not even a preset. It's like, where is that? Mm-hmm. I sold y'all what was the most popular or the most, the easiest ones to use. Mm-hmm. So use those. That don't mean I still use them right. or have to use them. Q, sell some old work. 
Because presets are easy to sell. Presets are easy to sell, but like I said. A green or age. 2016 through You selling presets is never going, it's still not the sauce. You just getting my product. Bring the grain back. <laughs> Bring it back. But yeah, I, back. I don't know that. I don't know. And that's, that's why I, sometimes I feel some type of way about people or creative selling products. I get it. You know, people selling classes and all that kind of stuff. I, I do understand it. But sometimes I feel like it's like, what are you really selling? Because the people not getting nothing from your presets. Yeah, they're not. But it's like you can't, you can't please everybody. And you can't teach everybody. So those you can't please, if you can make a profit off of it, why not? Yeah. From a business standpoint, I get it. Because I've seen quite a few influencers sell presets, and a couple of them, I was like, ooh, I was like, maybe I'll think about that. And then I was like, I don't want to do that. Because I, these are the same people who have told me. You have to make your store, your Instagram like a certain color scheme. Like you only use, mm-hmm. like if I take only brown pictures and I got to make my, you know, the little yeah, bubbles like brown and, and do this all that Like I just recently started to make, well, that was like maybe a year now. I did a little, all the bubbles are like a little image or something. Because I was like, okay, that seems like something I should do. And I liked it. So I was like, okay, I'll do it. But to make, like if my feed is black and white, I only do black and white photography, only post black and white images, only post like, I'm like, t- that to me feels inauthentic to the art. Cause I don't feel black and white every day. Some days I want to take color, some days I want to do a self shoot, some days I want to get Maul to shoot something, some days I want to get Nick to shoot something, some days I might want to get Blake to shoot something, I got another friend Brandon who shoots, I might want him to shoot something. I might ask my mom to shoot me in the middle of the street. Cause she, sometimes she, be, I'm like, well, I take my picture, she be like, I don't feel like it is cold. I'm like, Mom, can we go outside and take a picture? She take the picture because she's 72. So she take the picture like most older people with a phone. She be like, did I get it? Do I have you? But sometimes it be a fire shot because whatever she was doing, I'm like, yo, that's lit. She's like, oh, my goodness. And so, like, I I tell her, like, she, no, she really, she be hyped. And so, like, I tell her, like, Mom, the picture you took. Like, she, I was over her house, and I had, she had this poncho, and this lady at her church made it. And I was like, oh, I want to take a picture of me. So I took a picture and then posted it, and so a lot of people liked it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Mom, people like the picture you took." She was like, "Oh my god!" She she wanted to see it, and so she was like, "Oh wow!" So she was on the phone with her, her one of her friends. She was like, um, "I took a picture of my son," and she was like, "He posted it, and people mm-hmm. just loved that she like she was lit." Mm-hmm. And I liked that because it was it was kind of cool, but mm-hmm. like you know, it, it's it's any it's anybody's guess. However, I want to give my art out, but like. I just feel like once you get into like too curated, too color, and it's like, like a shop I only did weddings and bridal photography and engagement shoots. And then you be like, I mean, these are good, but like, what happened to the videos and the music and like, what happened to like their uh, marketing work and promo work? And you like, Ugh. I mean, it's nice, but like, I don't, I don't like that. When you, when you box yourself in for the sake of, sponsorship and brands and like all that like it's cool but like you're not even happy bro like shop by doing just weddings would be trash no way I, honestly it would to me it would be trash the, what, not the no, pictures just because but it would, know, ju- it would just be like we can do I see what you're saying yeah. I would just be like but you gotta these realize, are nice but uh, you gotta realize there's some people who only know us for wedding photography though. they don't know that right. we do all this extra shit and, and no and I get that I do get that but with that, y'all still do other stuff. Yeah. If y'all only did wedding photography, it would just be like, what? I feel like we wouldn't be as creative. Facts, but yeah, I think that, like you know, like you said, like people knowing y'all for more than one thing, I think that's dope. But it just it feels like a disservice to be like if y'all, like I said that with, with the wedding photography, if y'all only did that because like say that was just the thing that was popping off the most. Like most people would say. All right, cool. If Shop is making a half a million dollars a year doing wedding photography, they're going to take that money and flip their other projects. You know, they're going to put that money back into the other stuff so that stuff can grow instead of just saying, like, okay, we shutting down music videos, we shutting down editorial, we shutting down, we just doing wedding photography. Most creatives, like, do that and then mm-hmm. let that income supplement yeah, everything the stuff that they're doing and then they build that stuff up to get to the place where. 
everything we do. We had right. that conversation a like, couple of times to where it's just like, all right, fuck all this other shit. That's what's getting us paid. Yeah. Why not? I mean, it's a it's a conversation, but it's it's something to where I feel like we're we're not small minded and we see the bigger picture, so we know like all right, we can block in on weddings for a year straight. That's all we produce. Like, mm-hmm. We don't do nothing creative, and we won't get a bag. And then we're gonna come back and do what the fuck we been doing. Yeah, we've shot weddings where we've done no marketing for it. Yeah, so just the word of mouth. So that's on, on top of that, we've done more than one wedding in a day. I believe it. Because, like, wedding photography, like I said, my brother, well, one of my brothers already got married. My other brother's getting married in June. And when I started talking to him and his fiance about, we were just talking about, you know, wedding finances and stuff. And, like, the, it's crazy because most of my friends say when they, when you talk, like, you say you want to rent a venue, they give you, like, okay, this is how much it costs. Soon as you say wedding anything, the prices get. You can say, like, I'm going to rent this off my mother's 50th birthday party. Oh, okay, cool. It'll be $1,500. As soon as you say a wedding, $7,000. Mm-hmm. Like, what What happened? This is supposed to be a very special day. And I don't think a lot of people understand that. Because mm-hmm. you want this day to be once in a lifetime. And right. Spectacular. So everything we get from this one day is you can't get it again. So therefore, I'm paid. Don't fuck up. That's so you pay mind. for the expertise like this yeah. i'm a i'm a laser focus this day i'm not it's not a 16th birthday party like i'm getting this and those are the things we need to know that's what i would appreciate as a if i was getting married i would appreciate somebody telling me that now granted mm. me being a, me me being a creative i would pay whatever people ask depending on who i i mean i would probably hire my friends because i know their work like i'm not no new people for serious stuff but if I wasn't familiar with that, a, a wedding photographer telling me, like, listen, this is a once-in-a-lifetime event, so I know you saw the price, and maybe, like, if you having that conversation, I'm like, oh, is there any other packages? I would let them know, like, no matter what package you get, like, these prices go for our level of expertise and capturing every moment of your special day because it's once-in-a-lifetime. Because you probably don't think of that as the customer. Mm-hmm. Like, you think, okay... Wedding, I need a photographer, need food, need this, need that. You're not thinking that all of this stuff is a one, it's a one and done. It's a one stop shop. So when you get those images back and you cry, you're like, oh, I remember when that was when the vows and that was when the little girl tripped in the aisle and blah, blah, blah. Like, you can't get her to throw, dump the whole bucket again and they take that picture because no. now she's six and she was three right there. Like, you don't, you don't think of that. Even in editorial work, like if you get a fire moment shooting with a brand and it's like a dope picture and it was like, oh man, I walked out the elevator, like my jacket caught on something and the way it pulled was like, that was the image we used mm-hmm. to sell this jacket. And you think like, oh, go back in the elevator and do it again. Like, no, that, that was it. Oh, yeah. And I think that that's something that we have to push more as creatives, like to tell people we ca- our expertise or swiftness behind the tools that we use is what you pay for. We, we use a kit lens to the day, and people won't understand what that means. Mm-hmm. But if you do, we're using the kit lens to this day. Yeah, kit is that's always that's gonna that's be, what I want to say. Kit always gonna be in the motherfucking in the arsenal. It has uh, to. Like you do so much shit on the kit lens. We have every other lens. And still use the kit and the whole shoot. But the thing, again, you don't, you're not paying for, I mean, you pay for time, you're paying for, you know, a host of other things, but you're paying for the intangibles. You pay for what's in these people's brain. Because at the end of the day, I'm hoping that whatever I, excuse me, whatever I bring to the shoot, you you make it tangible. So I come to the shoot, I'm like, I want to look like a million bucks and I want this and I want like a uh, well lit, but like the background, this and the third, that's all stuff. As I'm telling you, you're like, okay, I'm going to use this lens. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And so when I get the images back and I look like Diddy, I'm like, yes, but I can't get those images back and I look like Diddy, but I actually have a day job and not even a tenth of his wealth. But then you say like, okay, this shoes will cost X amount of dollars. And I'm like, well, no, you got what you wanted. You got what you wanted. If you do a birthday shoot and you look 
it's your 30th birthday, but they managed to make you look 25, and you know you didn't live a hard life, like, come on now. They got you looking like Coke bottle, and when you showed up on set, it wasn't Coke bottle. But they, they posed you different ways. Because the thing about it is, with photographers, if you don't have on certain shapewear, they'll tell you, like, okay, pose this way. Okay, put your hand like this. Okay, move the balloons right here. So when, and you don't realize it, but when you get the images back, you're like, Oh my gosh, yes. So you have to pay the people because they know you don't like that little pooch right there. You didn't even say it, but they know by how you stand, you don't like that. So they like, okay, move your leg forward, put put the balloons right here, put your nails like this. And so when you do all of that, you get the images you want. And then when they say, okay, the shoot is gonna be X amount of dollars, you like Okay, cool. Well, I can make you look. I'll show you how you really. Let me show you. This is yeah. when you came in. I did test shots. This is what you look like. This is you post edit. So you want test shoot you. You want edited you. And that's the thing with shot by. Even if shot by. Even if y'all put, put out a heavily edited image, you never know because it it looks like oh wow they look like that. That's just how they look. This looks. And a lot of photography now, you can, it's almost like it's bordering on animation. Because mm -hmm. you're like, that's no skin that smooth. That's not even airbrush. No. That is the heavy brush. And you, you didn't even like angle that joint. You just like went in there, just ha, 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 hit that joint. Like, I wouldn't even post that. It's nothing. But people like that. They love it. They want it. It's it's wild to me. Like it's like you look, you look animated, and then the background is like a dope house in some tropical location, but you look painted in a real live background. Mm -hmm. Like he didn't even like let the edges at least be skin. And I, I saw a the funny you say that I saw artists talk about uh, skin edits, and I watched the whole video. I don't even do it remotely what he was talking about, but I was like, this is intriguing. And the way he talked about like creating shine or you know making definition or doing different things i'm like wow this is really interesting but the all the intricacies that he put into it you don't see any of what he was talking about hmm. with y'all stuff that's why i say with y'all stuff i like it because even if it's heavily edited it just looks like really good skin or like silky skin or whatever like that but some other things you see is like you you didn't want it to look you you couldn't have wanted yeah. to look like you have a thousand pounds of makeup on. Mm -hmm. Correction, some of them do though. Some I mean, of them show up. I guess if that's what you want. Be the worst, no. I guess if that's so worse. We're not gonna say names. I don't even remember names. <laughs> what is what are some what are like some of the worst experiences you've had on set? Because y'all have been really doing this for like a long time. So you talked about the makeup. You've talked to me before about that. Like somebody showing up with like tons of makeup on. So like what are these the worst experiences that like make it hard to do your job? When somebody shows up, what are the, those experiences that you like, this is going to make this tough for me? I'm, I'm going to show you the, the client trying to do bad posing. I'm okay. just continuously trying to do this bad pose over and over. <laughs> Thinking that that pose is it. The confidence behind someone who think they look good when they don't is... Through the roof, it's beyond. Like, oh, this is my one. You like, mm -mm. no, yeah, that shouldn't even be. <laughs> they're like, oh, but I'm, I'm a. <laughs> no, shouldn't. That's hilarious. Like, damn, makeup, makeup was terrible. And that's the thing I've learned with like with makeup. Oh my god, you have to like. That's why it's best. Just my opinion. To get your makeup done either on set or close to set because you need to know that the photographer and the, well if they're not getting styled but at least the photographer you and the makeup artist need to have some sort of powwow i blame mm -hmm. the ring lights yeah because it's way too bright mm -hmm. they think they look good in that light but in real life the light is way dimmer mm -hmm. it's not that white uh perfect yeah what's the, what's the word for it White balance? Yeah, like it's more of an orange, it's more of a greenish tone. So and that's like, it. 
So, and, I, and I've noticed that now with hairstylists and makeup artists, everybody does their work by a ring light. Mm-hmm. But to me, that's cool that you do that. But you should be the type of artist that even if you do the face by ring light, they can go to set and be like, okay, cool, this worked. Because if you do the tone and color based on that light, mm-hmm. and they look good under that light, but the photographer, but they say they're going to do a boudoir shoot, it's not going to be bright. No. Mm-hmm. So you get makeup done based off of her light, or you don't say anything. You just tell her, oh, be my face, give me, I want the foot long lashes, and this and then the third, and then you show Come up. Us. <laughs> you show up, and then the photographer is like, so the it, this is gonna be dark. So that bright makeup is not gonna read. It'll stand out so much. You 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 question yourself like, why did you do that? You got highlight on. So like, even if I contrast this image to the tenth degree, this highlight is like it's gleaming, popping off your it's cheek, like a fucking line on the side of your face. Mm-hmm. And then when you see the test shot, like you like paint. you like, can you um soften that up? Mm-hmm. No, that's her job. <laughs> You shouldn't have got how like this is not a, a, a outside shoe. No, no. I I agree. I've seen some. I just think people because it cost again. It costs a lot of money yeah. when you do this right. And if you cheapen it out, my thing with it, and I've done it myself. I just don't need to shoot right now. If if I'm trying to do a shoot and I hit everybody up and it's like okay, this is gonna cost this, it's gonna cost this, it's gonna cost this. If I don't have it, you know what? I'll hit y'all when I do. Because this is what it's going to take to get what I want. Mm-hmm. So why would I sit here and pay y'all, go get my hair cut, pay him, go get the fit, pay them, and then I get on set and you like, you said you wanted deep contrast, blue tones, and you have on dark fur cut, fur, and the fur is not going to show up in this dark blue light, mm-hmm. and you got all black on Black suede, black fur. You're going to look like a black splotch on this. And I'm like, yeah, but no, we can't edit that. This should have been lighter. Like, man, we, the setup is stupid, so we got to take the setup down or retool the shoot. And you don't want to, because then you don't pay for that. So when they say, like, nah, it's not going to work. And they say, okay, well, we, we'll reset. We'll shoot on the white background. We'll do this and the third. And you're like, okay. But then when you get that invoice yeah. and you see a reset fee, and you're like, oh, hey, um, so I saw, yeah, because you came in there with all black on thinking we was going to shoot you on that dark background and we weren't going to look crazy. So we changed it. Like, you didn't think that was free. Like, you didn't you didn't think we just re, reset up. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's interesting to me. The audacity. Those things like makeup and I don't know. I think, well. It's it's interesting to hear the makeup angle, the posing angle, because most photographers are creative directors. You have to be. So if you ask, if you say, I want to do this type of shoot, more than likely, the photographer can give you some direction as to hair, makeup, Mm -hmm. if, if not the outfit, these are the colors that will work with what you're telling me you want. So do these things and this will look best on the background or with the set design that you want. But then you want to do a boudoir shoot with red, but you want a blue light and then you want it uplit, but then you want a backlight and then you want six large red balloons. And it's like, listen, listen, listen. You lost. No, 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 no. We're not, we're not doing it. That's really it. So when do y'all say no? A lot. Oh, for real? When do you say, what makes you say no? When the makeup bag. Like, what's, what's no? Wait, no in regards to like. Like, you getting ready to work? We there? Yeah. You need to know? What makes you say no? Oh, like, that's it. No. I'm temperamental as hell. I'm moody. Anything can make me yeah. say no, and I'll be done with the whole shoot. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> but like, seriously, no. Not, not just your moody no, but no. No, that that's you just show up and you having a bad day, so it's no. Nah, no, nah, it's not that. It's for instance, it's like when you see things spiraling the way you yeah. don't want it to. Right, right. Yeah, it's just the energy is not there. 
the or models not listening or, or bruh, the champ jump. Primary uh, bank up sheet. Yeah. This is what, 2017? Or was it 2018? It had to be 17 years after. Uh, so, we do 2017, question. this brand, local brand, hit us up to shoot. They had the models and all that shit. Mm -hmm. We just had to shoot. Motherfucking, we in this jump. Shoot's going amazing. We in that jump, cooling, having fun. This one little bitch get up to camera and shit, and she just thinks she the shit. And I'm just like, she's not <laughs> this big, bro. And she trying to be sexy, and I'm just like, mind you, I work for Life Touch, so I know like, sway your hips, it'll give you some, it'll give you some angles type shit. Yeah. So, I'm like, yeah, just sway your hips to the side, like shift your weight to one side. And she's like, what? Boy, no, that's champion shit. Why would I do that? Like, <laughs> yeah. all right, bitch, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I'm like literally like all right do your pose cool now do what i just told you to do bet i'm gonna show you the difference this is why you should do that because you look skinny as shit right here mm -hmm. this make you look like you got at least a little bit of hip mm -hmm. oh my gosh okay i see what you see now you might know something <laughs> bitch shut up i should smack you i knew something before i told so you to do it which is harsh. why i told you to do it and now you want to listen because i showed you like well, this is this is what I was. But you a model though. No, well, that's relative. Model. Th this is the thing now. Terms are used now without resume. Smack your ass. Mm -hmm. So people are photographers, models, stylists, creative directors, makeup artists, hairstylists, because they've done their friends' hair, or they see that portfolio. they've done their own makeup for ten years, mm -hmm. or they've styled their family. Or picked out their clothes. They not style. They picked out people's clothes, and so they come on set. When like y'all are like, okay, we got cameras. Y'all got to set up. They like, oh, they photographers. Cool. Well, I'm a model, and you're like, oh, awesome. Okay, well, cool. Um, I need you. This is your mark. You just get on your mark. Um, this is what I'm looking for. Give me this. Da 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 da. And so they like, okay, well, look. So this is what I do. No, 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 sweetheart. Cause see, when you call Naomi Campbell. Say Naomi Campbell, we want to shoot you for Vogue magazine. She's like, okay, cool. Here's my rate. She show up. When she shows up, she get dressed. She get hair and makeup. She get on set. And they say, Naomi, we want blah, 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 blah. She's like, okay, cool. Let me know when you're ready. Soon as they say ready, bam, she's hitting poses all day. When she's done, she takes all the stuff off. Bop, bop. Thank you so much. Peace out. Shalom. That's what a model does. That's what photographers do. That's what stylists do. Like, you can't just pop out and be cute. That's mm -hmm. not a model. You just cute. Cute ain't it. You gotta be at work. It's work. Just like the photographer is not just hit. Just not. He don't focus the camera and just hit the button for an hour. He's changing lenses. He's changing angles. He's shooting from the floor. He's standing on the ladder. He's shooting over here. He's taking the lights over here. So if he's doing all of that, you can't just like all right, mm -hmm. boom, get me. You got boom, all right, boom. We turn my head. It's like nah. Yeah, I, then I've never seen anyone say no. I have. I've seen a model dismissed on set before, and I was like, whoa. They're, and it's always the photographers that do it. Yeah. Like he was, he was talking, and it was crazy because like I think she just didn't know, and I think she got booked because she was pretty, and she fit with what we were trying to do, and. It was a magazine shoot, and I think she, she worked. She was she fit everything. She worked out, and then when she got in there, and he was like, you know, I need you to do this now. And I think she just didn't. She had never really been yeah. that, and so it, was, it just looked like. And he didn't wait because it was like, you know, this is money, and so he, he's like, do this. Okay, I need you. Okay, well, try to give me this. Okay, try to give me that. And he was like, um, he literally like turned around and was like, yeah, I'm going to need her offset. This is not going to work. He was like, can somebody else wear this? Because we, like, so he yeah, like got her know. offset. We had to get her, like, just me and the other stylist got her, you know, took it all. Asked one of the girls, okay, who else is the size of X, Y, and Z? All right, put this on. Quick change of makeup. Yeah. Put the same girl back in there because it's like, you got to keep moving. Like, I'm sorry. And they, they told her to hang around because they were like, okay, well, maybe we can get you in another look or something like that. And it ended up like he just went through the other models, got just set done. And they were like, well, we'll pay you for the day since you were here, but like, yeah. whatever. But, yeah. it's make yourself useful. 
Right. Sometimes it's a no. Sometimes it's a no. Kid look like the no guy. Next. <laughs> Not doing this today. <laughs> I at least give it a try before I say no. You see her coming and be like that. Thank you for coming. God bless you. He's done that plenty. Um, got middle of his shit. He was like, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> God bless you. Right. Like, Ooh, come, come on, fool. You, been, you and Benji didn't try it. But just, you didn't say, God bless you. Got your boy. No, I'm going to hell. It ain't no God bless you. Uh, if I'm done with you, I don't. He didn't try to throw his shit off the bounty. How many floors was that? Why did that? Since you talking about throwing people off the bounty. Uh, I'm, I'm a changed I, person. Should I be in the industry? No, nah, just know that like certain people, like you can't work with them, and you can't force it because now, that force is gonna fuck up your energy and how you work. That I do agree with. Like when you're, because like I've worked with people because like I wanted, you know, like whatever they had, I'm like, oh, I want to work with them because I want to, I see what they do, and then you get there and you like, yeah, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. I, even if the product comes out good. Because most times if you work with somebody who's professional, you want to get good product. But it's just like, this wasn't... That's, like, I shouldn't have forced this. Like, it, it, it yeah. came out good. It was cool. But, like, I didn't need to do this. That's how I felt about the shoe work. Oh, okay. I think. All right. Uh, all right. Nope. Yeah, <laughs> so, this has been another episode of the Fashion Citizen Live Lounge with the shot by Gentleman to my... Right is Kid, to my left is Maul. This has been probably a iconic moment in That's history. Cool. You can't say Maul, you gotta say, I mean, if you say kid, The interviewer can't say like, bro, but right, you, yeah. you say Nick and Maul the whole time, but then you say Kid, and then you gotta say Fool, you gotta follow it up. Yeah, you got it. Well, if it I'm the interviewer, I get to say what I want. All right, no. <laughs> you on my show? How you tell people to say on my show? These I like. I'm. F- <laughs> hey, you, you, have to, you, have you have to keep that. 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 That's crazy. This my show. My shopper. That's wild. This my show. But these I don't like. <laughs> hey, uh, you get humble real fast. You're like, Hey, oh, uh, that's funny as shit. Hey, I'm, I'm, I thought you were Google and I can't hold you. Rest, no, you got ass. But uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we out. These out lights. Hey, that's crazy. <laughs>